let's get to it. I've got a bunch of questions from Twitter to answer, so I'm just going to go through them. Um, I'll read out alerts uh, as I go, um, so you can leave questions there as well. I'll do those as they come, so I don't miss them. Uh, but at the end of all this, at the end of all these Twitter questions, I'll go to Twitch chat as well. Um, you guys feel free to weigh in on any of these Twitter questions. Um, if you've got any opinions that you'd that you'd like to share, um, we can we can uh, talk about them. So, question number one from the true <laughs> the the true Buster. Thanks <laughs> thanks for the question. He says, are you planning to host a 1v1 tournament while all the top players are at LAN? I guess he means London. Uh, so that every player can play on equal ping regardless of region. Similar to what you did with Jorius versus Daniel, except it's a tournament with all of the ones players. Uh, probably not, but the reason is not because I don't want to. It's actually because it's very difficult to organize anything before a LAN. Uh, all teams are extremely busy doing uh, you know, prep for the LAN itself as well as media obligations and just, you know, being a tourist, as we saw from the Dignitas Twitter in, in LA. They were having a great time just going about and exploring LA because it's really, really far to travel. And, you know, London will be a really big distance for a lot of the uh, players outside of Europe to travel to. So probably um, a lot of people are just going to want to go and do London things while they're there. But I, I will try and get some show matches. I, I really enjoyed the show matches that we did get uh in the last one i'll try and do that again if i can but a tournament probably going to be uh too much well definitely a big tournament will be will be too difficult to organize maybe we could do a mini tournament we'll see i, I would love to uh but yeah don't hold your breath because these things are always extremely difficult to organize um okay jp says did you expect rock league esports to get this popular back when you first started whether it being views orgs etc um, and then he also says, who's been your favorite all-time player to watch? Ooh, I'll answer the first one. The last one first gets a bit of a, well, shorter answer. Um, probably Khaled, because he had the one, the crazy 1v1 run to win Saltmine 1, which was unbelievable. Um, but not just because he came out of nowhere to do it, uh, but also because he went undefeated and because he was playing on the on the away server to do it. So that, that really blew my mind. And then, uh, you know, watching them grow into... A dominant threes presence as well online yeah definitely that but yeah that that all time i think his story is pretty insane we still haven't seen the end of it though we're hopefully going to see him in london um but yeah uh, fairy peaks also up there uh the the only reason i'd say Khaled over fairy peak is because it's less uh surprising fairy peak had more of a gradual uh kind of improvement he didn't start off completely dominating uh, he was in the mix and then he dominated. So yeah, again, a super interesting story. I think his longevity was amazing and I was really happy to see him win a world championship in threes. Um, but yeah, the the players who, you know, scrub killer as well, his uh, longevity and ones and three success. I, I just like, you know, players who have, you know, my favorites are always players who have done well in 1v1 and threes and done it for a long time. Uh, but yeah, Khaled has to be number one in terms of just my favorite player. I was just like, oh, I can't wait to watch this guy play every time because I, I, I was just wondering how long is this Altmine 1 run going to go? Um, now, did I expect Rock League Esports to get this popular back when I first started? Um, I don't think I did, no, because I was kind of just new to it. I didn't really understand uh, the esports industry as, a, as much as I do now. Um, but the one thing that was very clear from the get-go is that Rock League is very easy to understand for new viewers. And that's a big advantage that Rock League has against other esports and uh, even other sports in general, is that it, it's very easy for somebody who's never played the game to watch it and understand what is happening. Even if they don't get all of the uh, high level mechanics, the concept is very simple. And that I think is a big advantage and helps Rock League's popularity. Um, but that doesn't take away from the ridiculously high skill ceiling, which is why uh, even people who've watched it for a long time keep watching, like myself and uh, many other hardcore fans. Um, but yeah, orgs, I didn't really know what to expect. Views, I had no expectations of my own like content getting a lot of views when I started. I just thought it would be fun uh, to make. Um, so no, I, I, didn't, I didn't see it getting this big back at the start, but I knew it had potential, I guess, is the, is the right answer. I don't know. I, I, I'm always, I'm never someone who like, expects good things to happen or expects the best just for no reason. Uh, there's got to be a, there, you know, there, I've got to really know a lot about something before I'll be like, yeah, this is going to blow up. I didn't really know enough to understand that. So, okay, uh, Yash asks, what will the impact of the Unreal 5 update be on RL Esports as far as RLCS is concerned? And are, are we likely to see an Unreal 5 announcement at Worlds considering that's when the season will end? Second part, I have no idea. That's not my, uh, it's, no, it's not my, um, 
uh, my job. I, I just work as a commentator, so <laughs> I've not I've nothing to nothing to do with that, and I don't know uh, anything about it. How will it impact uh, RL esports? I, I again, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the person to ask about Unreal Engine Five. I don't really get it, but all I do know is that uh, I've been told by people who know how to make games. I've been told by people who understand what uh, Rocket League is all about that uh, the engine that Rocket League runs on is very difficult to update, very difficult difficult to add to, and that Unreal 5 will unlock a lot of possibilities. So I kind of just trust that take. Sounds sounds legit. The people who've told me that are uh, people I trust and people I respect. So uh, yeah, probably big things, but I don't really know much about <laughs> this. I don't know how to make games. Uh, before I move on to the next one, Canis Extra 62 month added tier three. Congrats to 2000 videos. He says, thank you very much. Uh, and type reviews, thanks for the six month prime. Welcome to the channel for you. But yeah, Vicanis, you're insane, dude. That's a lot. That's a lot of months, and it's still tier three. Uh, you, you don't have to do this. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Um, okay. Maka says, at what age do you think it becomes not doable for older players to make an RLCS level? Asking for a friend, I swear. That's a very good question. And I think Rocket League is still too young to know. We're st it's still too early for us to know the answer to that question. The reason that right now young players have a big advantage is because with the... Uh, you know, continued improvement and uh, pushing of the skill ceiling in Rocket League, uh, the young players can learn all of the new stuff faster because their brain is more malleable and they can uh, just really, you know, focus uh, on a video game a lot better than uh, older people with more distractions. And uh, yeah, it's a lot harder to pick up on things uh, when you get older, as I'm sure all of you know. So it, we don't really know yet, but right now, um, if you're not getting started on Rocket League before you're ready for RLCS, it's so difficult to break in because there are just so many players who are unreal um, at um, at this game. And Rocket League is just so mechanical. It's so muscle memory heavy. It's so, you know, like there's two different... The way I like to think about it, I don't, I'm not a, a brain surgeon. I, I'm not a, you know, I don't, I'm not a biologist here. But the way I understand it is there's two different ways that your brain works when you're playing Rocket League. One of the ways that your brain works is you're thinking. You're actively thinking about what you want to do. And then there's also another way that your brain works by just doing things. Um, you know, that's, mo that's what muscle memory is. Your, your brain will just turn what you an idea that you have into motion without you specifically thinking about every movement that you're making with your fingers and everything that you're actually doing uh with your car in the game so younger players have a big advantage with that aspect and unfortunately for all the older players rocket league is a lot more about muscle memory and it's a lot more about automatic actions than it is decision making especially um especially threes these days with it just being such a fast-paced game so yeah, think about it. If if you're going to line up, uh, you know, any kind of mechanical play in Rocket League, you're never thinking, let me move my joystick a little bit to the left here, now up, now down, now I'm going to press this. It just happens, you know, it, you're just, it's automatic. So, the, yeah, that's a, that's why Rocket League is, is so much easier for younger players. They learn all that stuff faster. Um, they're just hard, I don't know, they're just wired better. Now, uh, there have been very old pl uh, players in other esports. Uh, I think as Rocket League gets older, I think that will become more likely. Um, players who are very, very good right now will be able to stay that level for longer um, than a lot of the players in the past who just fell off as soon as it got into open format. Now that it is open format, I think a lot of the players who are kind of finding their way to the top of the game are just that good and they're going to stay there if they keep working. Um, but yeah, for much further down the line, I could see older players having an easier time fighting for top spots as Rocket League reaches the skill ceiling. We're nowhere near the skill ceiling yet, though, so that's going to keep the young players on top. Uh, what do you think are, want RLCS to be in the future? What do you think would be big improvements to the scene as a whole, says Yarrow Bedwin? Um, I think RLC, well, my, my vision for RLCS, and again, this is just me thinking uh, uh, out loud. I'm not on the RLCS, uh, you know, or I'm not on the RL Esports team making these decisions. But the way that I imagine Rocket League Esports in the distant future, or maybe, who knows, the near future, is a multidisciplinary uh, esport. Um, I think that having, you know, well, the most obvious version of this would be three different circuits, a one circuit, a two circuit, and a three circuit. All of them are kind of the same model as the current 3v3 circuit, except uh, on, you know, different weekends. And you could have multidisciplinary champions, multi-game mode champions, players who are winning in what more game modes than one, the storylines there would be unbelievable. And I think that uh, we're seeing it now with Gamers Without Borders, we've seen it before with Fusion and Beyond the Summit and any other multi-game mode tournament. 
seeing variety is really good for uh, any esport, but especially for Rocket League, where 3v3 can get a bit repetitive if you do it too much, as seen by RLCS Season X with the grid and uh, RLCS going all, uh, on at the same time. Well, it was too much, so they didn't do the grid next year. Um, you know, if if we have you know the same amount of threes events or even less threes events but more twos and ones events i think you can have more events in the calendar without it getting repetitive more variety who knows maybe even do a, a crew battle um circuit i think the the potential for rlcs to expand uh, and become really really huge is to become a multi-game mode uh esport not just threes that's just my opinion though some people are threes purists and they don't want to see uh anything else that's fine um but yeah uh, variety is good. I think variety is very good for longevity and stopping viewer burnout. Um, okay, D Bone One Two Three. Thanks to the brand new Prime, by the way. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a good day, man. Uh, on to the next question. We have if okay. It says if were, but I think it means if you were given the task to introduce someone who's never watched RLCS before into Rock League esports by showing this person a series, what series would you recommend? Now, that is a tough one. That is a very tough one because a lot of people are going to immediately think season five grand final. It's the most famous rock league series of all time. The Justin zero second goal. Surely that one. But actually, um, I think rock league esports these days is a lot more polished and a lot more professional. And I think that casting has gotten to, you know, up to a much, much higher level. Uh, play has gotten up to a much higher level. I think a more recent series, just literally showing them, um, you know, the G2 queso final. <laughs> Why not that? That that would be a good way to introduce people because you've got a, a crazy crowd. You've got, um, oh, I clicked on something. Uh, you've got a really, really hype crowd. You've got, uh, I think, really polished casting, if I say so myself. And uh, uh, you, you've got better gameplay. So yeah, any any recent land. I was going to say any recent land that I remember there haven't been any, have there? It's just been one. So I guess just G2 Queso. <laughs> it's the only land final we've had. So it has to be that one, right? That's what I would show people. Um, so people can really see the scale of it all. It really was just a more professional uh, production than uh, Landon. But Landon, nostalgically, and as people who watched it at the originally, that's obviously amazing to look back on. But for newer viewers, definitely the more recent stuff in my opinion. Um, do you ever wake up in the morning with back pain from carrying the Rock League scene around? No, I don't. I, I, I never have back pain. I, I guess I just don't carry hard enough. Um, if you could pick five players that you'd want to become ones mains that have very little slash no history of ones gameplay, who would you pick and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Chat, you feel free to weigh in on this. If you could pick five players that you want to become ones mains that have very little or no history of ones gameplay, that's kind of harsh. So I could just like pick people to become ones mains right now and they're forced to become ones mains <laughs> i guess the experiment would be kind of interesting with players who are really not known for it like justin uh that would be a really interesting one um you could also just punish people for no reason like make rizzo a ones main for lols for the stream content um oh a chronic's in chat i'd love to see that a chronic as a ones main that would be really fun uh joyo is another one i think he could yeah, basically all of the nutty mechanical players who just free played <laughs> their whole life justin and joyo essentially the, the free play mains what if they were ones mains uh yeah a chronic as well he played a great show match recently despite never really being a ones play, uh, player um not sure who else really yeah let's, let's just throw rizzo in there to get some funny stream content he's forced to become a ones main <laughs> or yeah jesse as well for the stream content why not Oh, Raze Bull, of course. Raze Bull. How could, how could I forget? The GOAT. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I, I, because I know somebody will probably ask, why don't they play ones? Well, I'll tell you. It's probably because they don't enjoy it. You've got to enjoy what you're doing or else uh, Rock League, will, you'll just burn out and become bored. So if you don't enjoy ones, it's probably not worth practicing. But if you do, if you can chill out and just grind and improve, it's a good thing to add to your, uh, your practice routine. Will there ever be a Salt Mine 3 or a tournament similar to Salt Mine 2? Uh, always working on stuff, but no, no news yet. So stay tuned. Stay following me on Twitter to keep up to date with all that kind of stuff. Uh, do I plan on hosting some sort of ones event at Worlds? Uh, yeah, so this is kind of similar to above, two questions above. At Worlds, uh, it, it's really difficult to do much of anything in terms of events because everybody's so busy, including myself. Um, I mean, uh, you know, LA, for example, every at the end of every day, I was pretty much just like, I can't 
really function on a camera anymore or a microphone I'm good for like another two or three hours just chilling out at the end of the day that I'm sleeping you know like you you you, you guys probably don't realize how uh intense these events are to work for uh casters and for um for players as well it's non-stop there's no spare time but uh yeah who knows maybe maybe we can squeeze in a show match or something and in all your rlcs viewership experience which team has been the most entertaining to watch in their era Ooh, that's a good question uh most entertaining most entertaining teams well, I used to, Flipside were always my favorite team to watch back in the day because I was really good friends with their players and I thought they played a, uh, you know, really entertaining attacking style. So they were my first team that I really enjoyed watching. Um, after that, Rocket League was, it was kind of in a weird spot where everybody was just trying to learn the game. Nobody was mechanical enough um, to do like really crazy mechanical stuff consistently. Everybody was kind of just bad at the game. <laughs> So I think between season like three and six, everybody was kind of just not that good. So I wouldn't pay, there was no team that was really stand out like, oh, wow, this team is really going to be super exciting to watch play style wise. Everybody kind of just did the same thing. Um, and maybe even as far as season seven, it was like there was just, I don't know. Hmm. What would be the team that I was like, I have to watch all their games. Honestly, it, it, like the only teams I've thought I've got to watch all their games was Flipside when I was, uh, uh, you know, early season viewing, and then no other team really had that same pool where I'm like, I just want to watch all their games until Sandrock Gaming. Genuinely, no, no other team. Um, but these days, I think Rock League is in a phenomenal spot where there are so many amazing, exciting teams. Um, and the open format has really just led to that. So yeah, there's like, there's so many. I mean, right now my my favorite teams to watch, uh, love watching G two, Moist, uh, BDS, Team Liquid are super fun now. Carmen Corp were super fun this weekend as well. Um, Space Station Gaming, uh, Version One. You know, they, these are all great teams. It's always fun watching NRG, the 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 OGs. See how see if they can hang on. But genuinely, the only teams I always that I ever thought like, oh, I have to watch all their games. This is just too much fun. Was Flipside because back then I was more of a fan than actually like uh, doing content or casting or anything. So I think it's just different when you're doing that and it's not your job. Um, and then Sandrock because it was so hard. They were just so rare to see them play. So probably Sandrock. No Falcons. Um, right. With your experience and knowledge of high-level esports athletes, what are your thoughts on gaming addiction, balancing mental health, physical health with lifestyle? You have mentioned their sleep schedules before, for example. Uh, I think one of the biggest things or the most important things you can do as a young pro player, you know, we're talking earlier on about 15-year-old, 16-year-old professional players, players who are doing that as their full-time. I think having some kind of structure to your life is very helpful. Um, and we've seen many times players will they'll be in school while winning RLCS events. Uh, it's doable, you know. It, it, whenever you hear about somebody thinking about leaving school before they're even a pro because they want to try and become a pro, I would say don't do that. You can absolutely fit in enough game time um, in your day while studying and while going to school. So that is a good structure to have to your life. You, you just go to school, you meet friends, and you can interact with people your age in person. Uh, you, you get to learn as well. So uh, you're doing a lot of stuff there that's giving your life structure and purpose. And then you go home and there's even more purpose to your life because you're, you're grinding and you're trying to improve with your, your team. So that's, I think, really important. Just have some structure to your life to balance, uh, you know, practicing um, as, a, as a pro rock league player or an esports athlete, as you put it. Um, a, a chronic, I'll get to those at the end. It'll probably be a refresh or I'll just like a chat. But I'm going to go through them one by one so I don't forget where I am. Uh, Mitchell Deer, thanks to the 10 month tier one and also 12 month prime from Saucy Duck 27. Really appreciate that. Welcome back to the channel. Um, trying to keep an eye on where my food order is. Oh, there it is. I find it. All right. I'll have to run to my door at some point here. Right. Format wise, what is one thing you hope to see in RLCS in the future? Oh, and in addition to this, by the way, what else would I recommend in order to help uh, gaming addiction, balancing mental, physical health? Uh, exercise, just exercise. Uh, whether that be like going outside and walk, getting a walk. Um, just, yeah, just exercise. Exercise, sleep, and stay hydrated. It really is going to make you feel a lot better 
about yourself and uh, just make you better at everything in general. Um, okay, format wise, what is one thing you hope to see in RLCS in the future? Well, we already answered that, just uh, ones and twos. Uh, two, do you ever think ones and twos will become formally integrated in RLCS? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, doubles tennis does work in, alongside single tennis, uh, singles tennis. So yeah, there, there's plenty of examples in sports of different uh, types of the same game um, coexisting and even benefiting uh, each other. So I think that's what Rocket League could do. Uh, apart from that, format-wise, what would I want to see in RLCS in the future? Um, well, what do you guys think? What do you guys think, chat? What was the best split in terms of formats this season? Fall split, that was Swiss into single elimination. You had the uh, winter split, which was group stage into double elimination. Um, or spring split, which is just double elimination. Which which one did you guys in chat like the most? Um, and if you guys are watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can let me know in the comments as well. What's your favorite format? Um, because I think this is a topic that will give a very wide array of answers. I think the Twitch audience is going to say fall because it's a bit of a try hard format, Swiss into single limb. Um, but the uh, you know more casual viewers might not like that because it's like Swiss. What is going on? We don't like that. Uh, personally. My favorite formats end in single elimination. The grand final is one match and you're done. Winner of that, you win. So my, my favorite formats are always formats that end in uh, single elimination. That's my personal preference. I know a lot of people who prefer double. Uh, maybe they come from FG FGC background. Uh, that's that's fine. If you prefer double, you're that's totally okay. Uh, more power to you. But me personally, I like single elimination as a way to finish a tournament. Um, and yeah, Swiss or group stage, um, are, are probably preferable to get there. Um, I really, I've said it many times, I really like the Worlds format this year. Double elimination groups into single elimination per, uh, playoffs. That's peak format for the season. I can't wait for the Worlds format. Um, I, I really I really like, uh, like the look of it. Uh, and Swiss as more of a qualifier, aka wildcard type thing. So look forward to that one. Um, I, what do you? The other one thing I would add here is: Do you guys uh, think that there would be a benefit to having one format for regionals, another format for majors, and then another format for worlds, rather than changing the format every split? Maybe it would be better to just have a regional format so that more casual viewers, every time they tune in, they know what's happening. Because uh, I'm going to make an, you know, uh, let's let's think about. You could probably think about any sport because they never change formats in sports; they just do the same thing every time. But think about. Um, F1, every race, unless they're doing that weird sprint race thing, it's the same thing, Q3, Q2, Q1, and then the race. And everybody knows what, what's happening. You know what's happening on the Saturday. You know what's happening on the on the Sunday. Uh, but uh, in Rocket League, you have to tune in and be like, what's going on? Where are we again? Is this upper bracket? Is this lower bracket? Now, maybe that information could be communicated more clearly so that people don't have to ask. Uh, but I think that the casual fans and the first-time viewers would benefit a lot from a very... Uh, simple format. Well, one of the benefits of changing formats all the time is to find out which one's the best, which, which is the best format. But after we found the best format, why change? If we like find the format that is just perfect, which I think world's format might be, why bother doing anything else? Just do that. Just stick to the stick to the best one. Um, Iconic Alec, thanks to seven month prime. I really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back, I should say. Now I see that my food order is very close, so let's. Uh is this an easy question? Oh, it's a pineapple and pizza question. We already answered that. Uh, yeah, pineapple and pizza is fine, but no, never pizza. How many times do you use a bicycle in a week? Zero. But I do like to cycle occasionally. If I, ha if I have to do cardio, which right now I'm not doing, because uh, I'm just doing weights at the gym um, three times a week. But if I have to do cardio, I would probably choose cycling because running is, uh, I don't know, too bad for my old joints. <laughs> Way too bad for my old joints. Um, and yes, cycling, I love these, uh, in, in my city where I'm from, Glasgow, the, there's bikes that you could just rent and cycle about and then you park them when you're done. Love them. Really, really fun to do in the summer. So hopefully the weather will be, will get good again and we could do that. All right. There's a, this, this question, uh, this, this question is pretty straightforward. So I'll just quickly answer it, uh, before I have to run. What's the best way to get yourself on the map? You encounter new talent frequently. Uh, where, when does an up and coming, uh, up and gummer frequently catch your attention um, I think if you want to make a name for yourself in Rocket League, well, I imagine you're talking about casting, uh, but streaming as well, or content creation you just have to, the best way to do it is just to do it for fun, because the vast majority of people who try to become a YouTuber, a streamer, a caster, or anything in esports, or Twitch 
um they, the, the vast majority of people it doesn't work for them there's no like path you don't go to an evening class learn how to do it get a get like a qualification apply for a job there's no like path like that to do it you just the best way to do it is to do it for fun and if it goes somewhere great if it doesn't hey at least it was a hobby right and not a grind that you hated every second of um but yeah if you're t if you want to uh, get anywhere just do it for fun same thing with even being a player if you want to become a pro player just play the game for fun if you're good enough you'll you'll get up there you'll know like you'll know if you're good enough you'll know you'll be beating rlcs pros and wrecked you know uh consistently okay that's my door so let me be right back so yeah we were just saying the best way to get yourself on the map just have fun with it make have a hot make it a hobby and if uh if anything in esports goes it goes somewhere to become pro or to become noticed You'll have plenty of time to take it seriously when it does, but have fun like uh, on the on the way up. Don't don't make it a grind that you hate. Um, okay, when one's players who started off your stream playing show matches, uh, example FK Daniel Scrub enter RLCS, do you find yourself rooting for them or favoring them over other players who have never played in your stream? Um, I don't. Well, I've never really thought of it in the context of over other players who've never played in my stream. I've never really thought uh you know I, I, that's not really the way i think about it i suppose like if if uh you know first killer is debuting in rlcs against a team who are also debuting but i never featured i wouldn't be like oh please i hope first killer beats these people i've never collaborated with like it's more like i just want yeah i, I want to see uh ones players have success in threes uh so yes but not over not necessarily over other players um i suppose by default yeah over them because I, I do want the, you can't have one without the other but yeah um i i've definitely in the past and still do love to see ones players having success in threes and for a long time you guys who are near to the scene might not remember this uh but type one in chat if you remember that back in the days when people thought that being good at 1v1 made made you bad at 3v3 and people thought that being good at 1v1 uh, meant that you would never be good at 3v3 because you've learned the game the wrong way and you're never going to know how to rotate because you learned how to play once and now you're just, you're screwed. You, you, yeah, <laughs> genuinely, this used to be like a common take, a popular take. I thought it was the dumbest take of, of all time, but people actually thought that. Uh, but then obviously open format happened and a bunch of ones players started dominating. So uh, yeah, so okay. Jazz second account says, "What are your opinions on the buckboard wheels? Is the greatest and fastest wheels to grace a game?" And he's got the little wagon wheel things. I think for me, they they look ridiculous. Uh, I I don't rate them. Um, they make the car look like it's sliding around. I don't like it. I mean, how are you how, how are you gonna tell me that you're driving around in these and then you like you know pull a full right or a full left you're just gonna the car's gonna fall over how are these things supposed to grip onto the floor i've got slippery car bug with if, if i play with these i also like lose every 50 50 bug because you're too light like how are you gonna win 50 50s against people with chunky wheels when your wheels look like this they're made of like balsa wood like not a good look for me uh i respect people who want to go for it though it's fair enough uh, Yon Delante is the 1v1 meta has evolved so much thanks to you. Where do you see the future of the ones scene uh, is heading? Uh, I think ones will just become even more ridiculous uh, in the past two years, maybe two and a half years. We've seen the rise of freestyle 1v1 as an actual offensive strategy in legitimate 1v1. Uh, so I, I think that's just going to continue. The reason it took so long for freestyle 1v1, to, uh, if I want to call it that, to become popular is because mechanics were not good enough for players to make big plays and then recover. But now, like, do you guys remember, again, a last chat, uh, type one in chat if you remember the phrase high percentage play. I used to say this a lot. I don't think I say it that much anymore, but maybe I do sometimes. Uh, do you guys remember we used to always talk about high percentage plays in the very early casts? Because for me, that was the best way that I could, uh, you know, explain why a big play like an air dribble or an you know air dribble just a simple air dribble used to be a big play that used to be like you know peak mechanics like a basic air dribble so it, things like basic air dribbles things like jumping off the wall and hitting the ball into the goal wall shots were like they were low percentage plays back in the day like literally flying like two meters to hit the ball into the goal which is open 
that's a risk back in the day, which would have resulted in most players hitting the post and then conceding. Whereas now, that's just, we just call it an open net. It's not just a high percentage play, it's literally a free goal. So, like, back in the day, low percentage plays are these days what we'd call an open net. So the game's changed. Like the what what we consider a high percentage play versus a low percentage play now is a much 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 the difference is like way way higher level. So that's why uh, the one v one meta has evolved so much. The mechanics have improved and decision making as well, of course, alongside it. T doggy, thanks for the time month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Wrath of the drunk as well with forty six month year one. Welcome back to you as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, record record says, how does your natural temperament, talent, or mindset uniquely add? to your content or to RLCS content? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this question means. Well, it's quite a lot of questions kind of rolled into one. Uh, natural talent or mindset? Well, I don't really know what that means, but if you're here in chat, and love, I'd love to uh, have you clarify, but um, content or to RLCS content? Well, I suppose that means my casting, if it's talking about RLCS content. Uh, one of the advantages, I guess, to content and casting uh, content for RLCS that I've had since the beginning is I don't really care if I see a mean comment and I didn't know that this was too much of a problem for some people until uh, good friends of mine and uh, some of my colleagues have told me uh, that you know they'll read a bad comment and it'll tilt them for the rest of the day uh, which is uh, very normal actually a lot of people get tilted by mean comments even I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate um, but from the very beginning when I started streaming, I didn't, I had a couple of mods, but they didn't do anything. People would come into my chat and they would, uh, you know, talk trash, but I didn't really, you know, as soon as I'm done streaming, as soon as I click that stop streaming button, I I've already uh, forgotten. Like uh, none of that like sticks with me, like all the negativity. So I've been quite good, I guess, since the beginning at just ignoring the negativity and focusing on what I can control, which is what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's been a big benefit. Um, Helps me be more like consistent rather than uh, fluctuating in uh, terms of motivation. My motivation has been very consistent. I think it's related. Um, similarly, what skills did you have to work hard to develop or are continuing to work on as an analyst, caster, or commentator? So this part, uh, the thing that I've probably improved at the most in my casting, if you go back and watch my very first cast, I've, I've left them all up there. I've not deleted my old casts on YouTube. They're all, they're all visible for all of you guys to see. They're terrible. <laughs> but the thing I worked on the most was, uh, well, two things. Number one, vocal stamina, because I used to lose my voice every single event that I would do. I would just lose my voice. And nowadays I've got a lot more stamina. Um, and I know where my limit is and how hard I can push before I, you know, lose it. So I don't, yeah, I don't usually lose my voice until I want to lose it <laughs> now, which is probably bad. I probably shouldn't. But yeah, last day of every event, I'm like, ah, well, we've made it. Let's lose our voice together, <laughs> you know, every LAN. Uh, but the, the other thing is probably just hype commentary because I, I was pretty good at putting myself in the mind of a pro from the very beginning of the of my casting days. I was quite good at kind of, uh, I, what's the word, warging into their mind and thinking like they think, trying to figure out why they did certain things. Like the, the live analysis has always been a strong point of mine. But, uh, you know, casting uh, in, in exciting moments and really bringing the best out of those was something I had to learn. Um, so that's probably the biggest improvement I made. How did I work in vocal stamina? Just practice. Just keep on, keep on casting. Um, but also like not pushing yourself too far. Because one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make is they just start literally yelling instead of projecting. And they just like lose their voice very quick if you yell instead of projecting your voice objectively the best flavor of ice cream i don't really uh, eat a lot of ice cream uh but uh, probably vanilla or strawberry would be my go-to's i'm not a big fan of chocolate ice cream okay uh bagel asks, you think mina is going to get more spots at major because they have so many uh crack teams like kings and cola um well uh, that, that's only the, the start of the list you've also got scythes and uh veloce o1 there's a bunch of teams in, in mina anka a lot of teams who are really really uh ridiculously good but um, I don't know uh, what the plan is next season with major spots. I think Mina as a region are better than South America and OCE. But uh, in, in, in South America's case, I think it, it's probably closer. I think OCE, uh, there's, a, you know, there's a few teams at the top who are fighting for spots. And then the rest of the teams would probably very much struggle on a world stage. In South America, there's Furia are the best. And then a, a, a group of other teams are also pretty solid. 
uh, I mean, would do okay at a world stage. We'll probably see that at a wild card. For for Mina, I think Falcons are the best non EU EU NA team, um, and then the next best five or six teams in Mina are better than the next best five or six teams in OCE or Sam. So if Sam and OCE have two spots each at majors, I think uh, Mina deserve them. I do think Mina deserve as many spots as South America and Mina have uh, because Mina is better, in my opinion. Um, but we'll see. Wildcard will will reveal a little bit about that. We'll finally see more than one Mina team at an event. Uh, Chris says, were the positive aspects of league play format, how could you translate these positive aspects into our current open circuit system? Um... I think people look back on league play format with rose tinted goggles a little bit. I think it. I really think it was a lot worse. Uh, I think that the gameplay was worse. I think that uh, it kind of stopped actual talent from rising uh, as much as the new format does. Uh, and I don't think it was as interesting as people remember. Uh, I, I think league play was way worse than the open formats of RLCS Season X and beyond. Way worse. League play, boring. No, no, no thank you. Uh, but how could you translate the positive aspects? Uh, well, one of the positive aspects of league play is that you knew when the big match was going to happen. You know when NRG are going to play against G2. You know when, uh, you know, the, the the one time in the season or the two times in a season, the big match is going to happen. That's an advantage because players can, and fans can plan and they know when it's going to be. Uh, so a better, how could we do that in the current open circuit system? Um, I think the best way to do it would be to just have... Uh, consistent formats. I think maybe it's time to figure out what the best format is and do it every single regional so that people just know what's happening when and on what day. Um, apart from that, yeah, just communicating information more efficiently. I think that uh, it would be possible for uh, fans to know every time that a big match like that is happening that they want to watch, but the information isn't always communicated too well. Um, the Red Cell, thanks to the 45 month year one and Ian, yeah, thanks for 27 month year one welcome back to both of you guys uh, he says, don't know if you were asked this or not but are you coming to the Riyadh LAN? Uh, I don't know, I, I don't think that's all been discussed yet uh, between the tournament organizer and the uh, the casters so who knows But um, that's, that's POG, I would definitely like to go how many different types of video formats, show matches, replay scrims um on my main channel, I've got a lot of replay reviews from back in the day. Show matches, some podcasts are probably in there. Mostly show matches, though. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, and replay reviews and stuff. But yeah, show matches probably number one uh, for my videos. What do you think of an all-star event in Rock League? Like three players, one sub, one coach play uh, at LAN, play midway, midway through LAN. Three players, one sub, one coach at LAN, play. So you think, uh, if this question means should the subs and the coaches play at an all-star event, then definitely not. I don't want to see the coaches playing. If they were good enough to play, they'd be players instead of coaches. <laughs> no offense to them. Uh, you know, coaching is a very important thing as well. And uh, there are very good coaches. But no, I don't want to see coaches play. I don't want to see casters play at an all-star event. I want to see players play at an all-star event. Uh, I would like to see, um, I think uh, the, the cool thing to add to the calendar might be something like a you know what we did with smad online except on lan so imagine smad on lan with cross regional teams like you have uh general managers who are drafting teams somebody picks monkey moon and then they also grab like lj and i don't know who would likely be available later on in the draft maybe let's say monkey moon lj if you're picking monkey moon you must be first pick so monkey moon then you get lj and then you grab I don't know, uh, CJCJ or something. Imagine that's a team, a uh, 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 mid-season invitational kind of kind of event. That would be cool. That would be different. That would be variety. I'm all about variety. I love variety in the esports. So that would be pretty cool. Uh, who's the best ones player right now? Who's the best ones player in the history of the game? In history, is Fairy Peak. No debate. Easily, he's had ridiculous longevity. Uh, he was a goat for a long time. Uh, the the boat for a long time. Just best. On top of being goat, so yeah, fairy peaks are the greatest. Uh, right now, uh, probably you have to still say Jory is, even though he did lose a show match recently. That's not enough to take him away from uh, from being the best. He's uh, yeah, he just he's won more big tournaments than anyone else, so probably Jory is. Um, but it's definitely closer. You know, for a while there, there was quite a big difference between Jory and the other best players and the next best players. Now it's uh, yeah, it's getting closer, getting stacked to the top. There's a lot more, a lot more players. 
in that uh, group. Uh, okay, no, you hinted at another Fusion 1s tournament. Uh, well, that would be Salt Mine tournament. Fusion was crew vassals. So many 1s go, so you plan to make a huge event uh, happen in the future. I always want to make big events happen, but it's difficult. You know, we're working on stuff, but nothing to report. Uh, what are you hoping to see or not see on Unreal Engine 5? I, I'm going to skip this because I have no idea. Uh, but I'll, Well, actually, I won't skip it. I, I, I'm going to say that I want to see Workshop added so that Lethemir can uh, be rewarded and everybody else. I think that would be pretty cool. I also, I, I, I mean, I, this isn't really an Unreal 5 thing as far as I know, but my biggest thing that I would add to Rocket League, the game, or my favorite thing to be added to the game that hasn't been added uh, would be team mode. Uh, because the the thing that I uh, not struggles the wrong word, but let's say the thing that I miss the most from current Rocket League is not being able to just log on, queue up with anyone, and then hit ranked and get a good game, uh, get a close game. Like there, you used to be able to do that in Rocket League because matchmaking uh, was different. What the original matchmaking in Rocket League did is it took the average rating of all three players in this team and the average rating of all three players in this team and it, it would go, oh, these are the same number. You guys now play each other. Whereas these days, what the matchmaker does is if you have three players in this team and all of them are three different ranks, the matchmaker will go, oh, this guy is the highest rated of this team and this guy here is the highest rated of this team. Therefore, these two teams will play each other even if one team has a massively higher average rating than the other and it's just not close. So I think that's probably led to a lot of uh, Smurfs existing. Um, like, you know, people just wait, make Smurfs because they want to play with their friends without losing 20 games in a row on their main. Um, that's I can't really blame them for that. Um, and I mean, I've got, I've got a couple of Smurfs in Rocket League. Actually, I've got three Smurfs and they're all at different ranks so that if uh, my... Uh, one of them I've only played with the same two people on actually two of them i've only played with the same two people but it's different groups both times i have a smurf that i've only played us west with yummy cheese man and kami on and we're grand champ two collectively we are grand champ two that is our rank we kept playing until we got to a rank that we were winning half our games it turned out to be grand champ two that's not even a like a a, a smurf as you guys would think of the word smurfing um I've got another one that I only play with two of my friends who are both in Diamond and we are champ two. So me with my two Diamond friends, uh, all of our accounts that are, we've only played together on these accounts, those accounts are in champ two. So we essentially made team mode by by making Smurfs. We, we did what team mode would do and that is put you all on an average rating and then it gives you a fair game. Uh, the only way that you can do it is by smurfing. So I would rather, if it was if it was just built into the game, so then nobody would have to smurf. You wouldn't need multiple accounts just to play with your friends. Um, yeah, I I don't think that the current system uh, deters people from smurfing. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that uh, the reason they changed the or the the ranked matchmaker from what it used to be to what it is now to prevent boosting and smurfing. But in my experience, it only increased smurfing because now Rocket League's free to play so you can just make a free account and uh, immediately jump into ranked so yeah I think I think smurfing actually increased I don't have the numbers on it but my own experience I, I'm like looking at the teams I'm up against and I'm like well that guy is clearly better than the other two which is fine as long as they're all collectively aver on average at this rating but yeah I think smurfs are more common though it's, it's not that Smurfing increased because of free to play, not because of matchmaking. I think it's both, though. Like, I think it's probably both. Um, I think uh, it, because it's not possible anymore to just queue up with your friend who is worse than you or better than you without getting into a bad match that you're just going to lose every time. Uh, players have to smurf. They have to make a smurf to, to be able to enjoy the game with their friends. Isn't that the point of Rocket League, to enjoy playing a video game with your friends? That, for me, is the point of video games and the point of Rocket League. Uh, as a casual game, obviously the esport is, is another thing entirely. But the game, the purpose of the game is surely to play with your friends and have fun, and you can't do that with the current matchmaker system and rank. Some people's play say play casual, that's not fun. Come on, that's not fun. Some of us like to compete, even if we're like competing casually. Casual is not fun. It's not a solution. Team mode is the only way that I can see it being uh, functional. You make a team, you invite your buddies, your team has a rating, and you queue as the team. And you could be in multiple teams. You know, you join this team, you join that team. 
as long as you're queuing as a team, as long as the, the collective that you're queuing with are in a team in whatever team mode that uh, Silent put together, you just click create team, name the team, boom. Now you're a team with a team rating. And you can just queue up in the same rank playlist. I, I think it would really solve a lot of issues. I think it would, uh, it would solve, I mean, immediately I'd be hitting up like a bunch of content creators who are different ranks than me and being like, let's see what our team rating is. Why don't we just play and see what our team rating is? Even though we're like wildly different MMR, you could do it and it would be fine. Um, Adib8, thanks to 2 Month Prime. Welcome back to the channel, man. Do you always play on US East? No, I play on mostly on EU, but I do play a lot of US East as well. Um, okay. Why did he decide to cast day one of regional? Stumpy was off this weekend, so I was casting uh, last weekend on EU. What's your highest and lowest point as a caster slash analyst for RLCS? Highest and lowest point? Um... Highest point, I suppose. Uh, there's well, there's few. I mean, casting. Uh, uh, yeah, Sandrock beating G two was definitely a high point as an RLCS caster. Um, casting BDS winning Sweden and casting G two winning LA, they'd probably be the top three uh, moments for me casting RLCS. Lowest point? I don't really know. I don't really, I don't really dwell on that. I actually nothing comes to mind. I don't know if uh, uh, I don't know if that's bad, but yeah, I, nothing comes to mind. Um, I actually can't think. No, I'm, I just love it. I love doing what I do, and uh, I don't. I don't really dwell on low points, so I, I actually can't think of anything. Losing my voice? No, that was a good thing. We uh, we were having such a great time. Um, no, genuinely, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's a dream job, so. And I'm just as motivated now as I ever have been, if not more. So. <clears throat> getting predictions. I don't mind getting predictions wrong. Like, that's fine. It really isn't that bad. Um, low point when T-Bates calls my bracket fraud tomorrow. I don't think T-Bates is going to be calling my bracket fraud because he said that Team Liquid were frauds and they uh, they came second. So really... Who's the fraud? Also, T Bates thinks that a bracket reset isn't a loss, and uh, yeah, I, I think that that proves who the fraud is between us. That that proves conclusively which one of us is a fraud. T Bates doesn't think a bracket reset is a loss for the team who lost. <laughs> uh, any chance we're going to see another show match with the Legend ninety seven uh, with Cux Cux versus Leth? That would be that would be pog. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I I, I don't uh, I don't uh, I haven't talked to Cux in ages. I'll have to. I'll have to hit him up. I mean, first touch tomorrow. No, I'll be on tomorrow. I'll be on Gamers Lab without borders, so I won't be on first touch. Name the top five most likely teams to win the World Championship this season. Ooh, okay. Uh, top five most likely, obviously BDS, Moist, G two. I'd say they're the top three most likely. After that, it becomes a bit more difficult. Um. I mean, they're they're the top three by such a large margin that the other teams don't even matter. <laughs> the other teams don't even matter. Like other teams, like Falcons, Furia, or Dark Horses. And you've also got like SSG. You've got uh, Carmine Corp these days looking pretty good. Um, yeah, Phase are pretty consistent on lands. Um, yeah, you can never count out NRG. Yeah, I think any going say, going away from BDS uh, BDS Moisture to that's like the clear top three for uh, land and and also for uh, worlds. We do a replay review of older players like Garrett G Chicago in the near future. You want to know how they are keeping up to the newer generation of players? Hey, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, any tips on how to do voiceovers and speak with confidence? Whenever I try stuff uh, like that, I sound way too quiet. Uh, you've got to have the right microphone. I think that uh, I get a microphone buff uh, when I when I talk and make content. Um, so make sure you've got a good mic, a good uh, recording mic. It, like audio is by far the most important thing to get right. You can have the most scuffed face cam ever. As long as your audio is good, people will think it's uh, fine. But if your audio is destroying people's ears, that's actually painful. You know, people, you, you can't close your ears. You can close your eyes. So make sure the audio is right. Um, as far as speaking with confidence, you, you have to get used to listening back to what you've done. I know one of, well, type one in chat if you hate hearing the sound of your own voice. 
Type one in chat if you hate hearing the sound of your own voice. Uh, everybody starts off absolutely despising the sound of their own voice. When I started uh, uh, casting, I was like, oh, I watched a video or I started, I started making videos. I listened back and I'm like, why do I sound like that? What is wrong with me? You know, everybody hates, everybody hates the sound of their own voice. But you have to just realize that for everybody else, that is what you sound like and they don't care. So if they don't care, if nobody else is bothered by the sound of your voice, why do you have a right to be bothered by the sound of your own voice? You've got to, you've got to get over it. Because if you're not, if you don't like listening, well, if you, it's not even that you like doing it. If you can't listen to the sound of your own voice in content and casting and speaking, how are you supposed to improve? If you can't listen back to it, you're never going to be able to improve because you don't know what you sound like. <laughs> You've got to listen to it and think, oh yeah, this sounds good, this sounds bad, I could do this better, etc. Uh, you gotta get, you got to just get over it because nobody else cares. So just realize nobody nobody cares. So you shouldn't care either. Sir from Barton, thanks to 32 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, man. Uh, Mitch says, what's something you knew, you, you, you know at 2000, you wish you knew for your first upload that'd make things easier slash better slash faster? Um, I don't, I kind of like the path I went on. I'm not sure if I would change anything. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'd probably just, if I could, <laughs> something I know now is that, hey, we made it. So probably just like, uh, at the start to say, yep, just keep doing that. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so now I know it works back then. I didn't know it was going to work. So that would have been nice to know. Uh, maybe that would have demotivated me though. You know, like maybe, maybe the fact that I didn't know if it was going to work or not was uh, motivation. So maybe I would just say nothing, say nothing. Uh, when starting YouTube, what was your goal with uh, channel? And did you imagine you get the sh level of success you have uh, accomplished? I never thought I'd get to this level, no. Uh, long time watcher, keep up the great work. Thanks for being a big, big brother one scene. I appreciate that. Uh, my my main goal with my channel when I started was actually, I, I made a YouTube channel to promote my Twitch stream, funnily enough. <laughs> because one of, my, um, one of my streams that I did, uh, or yeah, one of my streams had a really funny Twitch clip and I thought to myself, oh, that was pretty funny. Maybe I should put it on the Rock League Reddit and people will see it and think, hey, I should check out this guy's stream. So I, uh, I, I told that to one of my friends and he told me, don't upload a Twitch clip to uh, Reddit because nobody watches Twitch clips. What you should do is upload it to YouTube, then post it on Reddit because then people will watch it. And I thought, okay, cool, let's do that. And there is a way, there's a way that you could just directly export clips or highlights from Twitch to YouTube. So it was really easy. I just chucked it on YouTube. And then after I saw how, how many numbers, how much numbers it was doing over there, I was like, why don't I just do this more? So actually my YouTube started off as a way to just promote my uh, Twitch stream uh, on Reddit. Uh, and then after a while, I was like, actually, this is kind of fun. Like people seem to like these videos as well. And uh, I didn't really ever want to become a YouTuber anyway. Uh, I, I don't really think I am a YouTuber, um, but streaming was always something that really interested me. So I thought, I could, you know, kill two birds with one stone here. Just have my, uh, the best bits from my YouTube make it, or my, from my Twitch go on YouTube. That was kind of the goal. Uh, Big Pat, thanks to the 10-month prime. Welcome back to the channel, man. Yeah, YouTube discoverability is crazy. So that, uh, that was uh, one, that was one thing I realized very soon. I was like, yeah, this is blowing up my stuff. I've got to keep doing this. Uh, have you ever considered seriously a return to managing a Rock League team? No. Or even joining as a coach? Also, no. Also, congrats. Thank you for doing what you do. I want to be show matches to put your hands down in favor of our content creator watch. Uh, thank you for continuing to support the community. Yeah, I appreciate that. Ladiesman217. Um, no, I don't want to manage or coach because pro players are uh, horrendous to work with. <laughs> they're they're not, not fun to work with. Uh, I mean, managing and coaching, I've done it before. Uh, it's not really for me because, well, coaching is a bit too repetitive, so I don't really enjoy it. It was feeling like I was burning out doing it, so I just stopped. Um, anytime that happens to me, I just stop stop doing whatever's feeling like it's a, like a grind. Any, anything that I've ever done since I started on this road of content creation and casting um, and tournament organizing, I guess. Anything that I've done along the road, which felt like a grind and felt like it was going to bother me if I kept doing it, I just stop. I don't do it. It doesn't matter if it's like, quote unquote, worth it. I feel like it's better to just pick the things that you enjoy in content creation and focus on that. Um, yeah, I don't really enjoy these things. Who knows though, maybe one day I won't enjoy what I'm doing and I'll have to make a switch and uh, yeah, never say never. But right now, no, I, I love what I do and I'm gonna keep doing what I do. 
Um, what's your favorite place to eat at? Awesome, congrats. Thank you. Uh, favorite place to eat? That's tough. That's tough. Uh, funnily enough, oh, actually, here's a good one. Do you guys remember? Um, oh, sorry. I didn't scroll down enough. Yeah, favorite place to eat at. Uh, do you guys remember when I was streaming with Marky Duda way back in the day? We were both in person doing split screen 2v2 uh, on my channel. And we uh, when Marky used to live in Glasgow, uh, close to where I lived, we occasionally would go out to restaurants because we both uh, were getting various rec restaurant recommendations. We'd go try them. Um, and then in one of the restaurants that we went to was a steakhouse that blew our mind. And then we uh, went live because we were both uh, we were both like poor students. I just graduated, uh, and uh, well, actually, I, I I graduated like a year before. Went into a job that I then stopped, and I was job hunting to mark a student. So we we went live with like a one hundred pound donation goal, and the the text above the donation goal was expensive steaks or something. I I, I can't remember. Uh, and. Then a guy called Tasty T came and gave us a hundred quid, and we went and ate steaks. <laughs> we did spend that money on steaks, so we're not gonna, uh, we're not lying. We that that did get spent on what we said it would get spent on. Uh, but that restaurant I've still been to uh, to this day. I've been back many times, and it's a really really good steakhouse. Miller and Carter, not sponsored, but it's a chain in the UK, I think. Um, yeah, really good steaks there. Uh, yeah, that was that was funny. Um, Sounds like a very Johnny Boy move. What do you mean? I don't, these days, I don't push donations at all. Okay, this is maybe a controversial take, but I feel like as you grow as a content creator, as you grow as a streamer, um, and as you grow as a, you know, anyone in this industry that we're in, it's your responsibility to adapt your, uh, you know, subs slash donations slash cheering um, pushes. Is that is that a hot take? Because some people say that it's not your responsibility, that it's up to the viewers to decide what they do with their own money. But I really think that as a streamer, you have a big influence on what people do with their money in terms of like subbing, donating, cheering, etc. And I think that some people, when they're on the grind to try and do it full time, they're really pushing it so they can get over that mark and do it full time. And then once they get there, even some people go way beyond that and make way more than you need to be full time they still have that same level of focus on uh the the revenue aspects of streaming as they always did in the beginning uh and i i think it's a i don't like that i i like seeing people change and when they become more lucky because i do consider it luck uh in a part in a way you know when you're fortunate and you've got things going for you I don't like the idea of asking, uh, you're really, really pressuring, trying to manipulate people who on average are probably uh, in a place where they need that more than you do to give it to you. Uh, maybe that, I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I've tried to like adapt over the years because back in the beginning, um, I definitely did need to push things like subs, uh, cheers, donations, etc. Or else I wouldn't have been able to do streaming full time. But now I'm I'm fine. Like none of you guys have to sub. Literally none of you, and I'll be fine. I I can still stream, uh, full time. Um, but yeah, every time a big streamer, you know, just says Twitch Prime, they just get like a hundred subs. So I can't really blame them. And on the other side of the coin, you can't you can't fault them because they literally know if they just say it, hundreds of people are gonna sub. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit of a difficult one. I do think there's a level of responsibility there though on streamers to not. I don't know. I just try and make good content. I just try and make good content and focus on that. It's just literally, you can't, you actually can't talk about this topic without it backfiring. <laughs> one time, guys, one time I'm going to talk about this. No one will sub and then we'll look like the best streamer of all time. But in the meantime, well, since we're not the best streamer of all time and not respectful at all, thank you to Archie for the 23 month prime, three month prime from the Flabby Cow, Arello for the brand new prime, Tavarel for the brand new prime, Gamer 6x9 for the eight month prime, 
and Capone RL for the brand new Prime. Also three month Prime for Rocky Punk. See it? See what I mean? See what I mean? Like this is why you can't really. I don't blame them because it's that easy to get subs as a big streamer and the thousand bits. Because why not from CYB? <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah, I think there's not enough focus on content these days. There's too much focus on uh, just trying to milk the viewers as much as possible. Stop scamming yourselves, you idiots! <laughs> For usually quite things it's with Prime and 50, uh, 51 with Prime from Grim says, "Look what you've got and done now, you maniac." I, I prefer not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble, so <laughs> prefer not to speak. I just want you guys to know that I'm good. Why is why can't you why can't you hear that without uh just accepting it as fact? Thank you, Snake RL for the Brady Prime. Uh yeah, I'm good. Uh we're all of the RLCS casters are looked after very well. And I've been very fortunate with my content to set up well, set myself up well, so you don't need to sub with Prime Life, li Lifeless Corpse. You didn't need to do that, <laughs> but, but thank you. Uh, I do appreciate that. I know Woot Bear as well. Thanks to the Prime, especially does. Yeah, especially does. Definitely. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, is, uh, if the if there is one place you could travel, where would it be? Uh, it depends. If we're talking teleport, probably Australia or New Zealand because it's the farthest uh, distance. So if you could just be like boom, I'm there. That would be cool. But that's really, really far to go. So yeah, that would, that would be a rough travel. I don't know how those guys do it all the time when they're coming to events and they travel that long. Um, but apart from that, where would I like to go that I haven't been? Definitely want to go to Iceland because that's not too far away. and It would be pretty fun. Um, where else would be fun to go that I've not been to? Don't really know. Probably that would be top of the list for me. It's a different world over there. Lone Mantis, thanks for the Prime. Didn't have to do that, literally. And Fire Red Alez, thanks for the 7 month Prime. You also didn't need to do that, but I appreciate it, man. Uh, Ruben says, of all the players you've seen play, who is the most entertaining for you personally? Not necessarily the best. One you look forward to the most watching play. Uh, probably the player... Okay, since this question is saying not necessarily the best, let's say that the lowest rated player who I had the most fun watching play Rocket League was probably Muri. I don't know if you guys remember Muri, the freestyler. Uh, but he was very low rated compared to pro players. Uh, I think he was like Grand Champ or something. Maybe he was higher, I forget. Uh, but he was always so fun to watch play because he never made the same play twice. Uh, and one of the things with freestyling that I don't really enjoy uh, is players just going for the same thing over and over again. I like the, the players who are actually freestyling almost. They just look like they're making it up as they go. Uh, so that would be one player that comes to mind and the not necessarily the best. But yeah, he was still a great player. Really fun. Miguel SC7, thanks to the 20 month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, Arsenal voice chat is very funny, true. But yeah, I, I think like the, I kind of like watching players who it just looks like they, they're on a different level when it comes to improv mid game players like Ahmad like watching Ahmad play is so fun because he he just uh yeah he he just looks like he's freestyling same thing with Jari is when he's on on his game uh Joyo as well the lone man is thanks to the prime I missed some subs did I uh who did I miss I'm sorry if I missed someone I didn't mean to uh but just at me in chat if I missed you uh what is the best and worst part about working with Rock League and Psionics uh <laughs> Best part about working with Rockling and Psionics is just uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, the 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 are the Rockley caster gig has to be one of the best, if not just the best caster gig in all of esports, um, and that's a large part due to Psionics and the Rockley esports team um, setting it up in such a way that the casters can uh, enjoy it and also get a ton of support. Uh, so yeah, shout out to them for that. I don't know, it's just really fun. Just love working. Everybody, I, I know, everybody in the team, I believe, just loves uh, working with uh, the team. I can make the face cam bigger. Yeah, we got we got some space. There we go. There we go. We'll make it that size. Yes, that's, that's the space we've got. Zupermon, thanks to the five month tier one. He says thoughts on APAC North and South so far. Um, I I think APAC North and South have a future. I wonder what would happen if they were combined together. If they would become competitive uh compared to like OCE maybe. I don't think they would immediately, but it's possible. Uh in 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 the longer run. 
Um, I think it's really important in the meantime, though, that these regions keep on, uh, you know, just getting spots at majors. I love that they get spots at majors. I'm loving that that's uh, hearing about the sub-Saharan African teams qualifying for World's Wildcard as well. That's super cool. Um, excited to see them play. Do I prefer tri casting or dual casting? Uh, I mean, dual casting, co casting with one person is better most of the time. I think tri casting would get uh, pretty old pretty fast. I think it's good to keep that for special occasions. No experience casting whatsoever, but I know the scene a bit. Would you invite me to do a match series cast at any time you're comfortable with? Who doesn't try, doesn't get in it? Uh, I'll pass, but thanks to the offer. That's the offer. I won't because if I do it for one person, I have to do it for everybody. Unless I have that, unless that's like a giveaway or something, then uh, I don't think I can do that because it wouldn't be fair. Um, but my best advice if you want to get into casting is just do it. Just go download a replay from ballchasing.com, go live on Twitch, cast a replay, uh, and then listen back to it and think, what could I have done better here? Did I miss something? Did I miss any important details I should have highlighted? Did I stumble on my words? That's all. Did I, uh, you know, really hype up this goal as well as I could have? Was the were, was the vibe of the cast good? I think one of the most important things that's often done wrong, uh, especially with Rocket League, is the the general vibe of casting. Um, and one of the things I've always tried to focus on uh, in my own casting is just having the kind of vibe of, uh, like, I I would want the viewer to when they hear me speak think. That just sounds like a guy who is a fan of the game and we're just sitting down watching the game um, on the TV or something. You know, that kind of vibe, just like the this person is a fan. Uh, they're not trying to be like something they're not. Um, they're just having some fun and, you know, hyping up everything that needs to be hyped up, explaining everything that needs to be explained. But just like the, the vibe is so important to just be a good vibes. Just to give some examples. Whenever I hear like a caster sounding like they're bothered by the fact that they had to witness a play or a goal, I'm I'm like cringing. I'm like thinking to myself, why do you even? What are you doing? Why are you even casting? If you get but if 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 your reaction to a goal or to a play in Rock League is to go, <sighs> man, it's stuff like it's stuff like this that makes me not even want to be here, man. Like. That's just bad vibes. Like, get out of here with that. I hear this way too much, and I don't know why that, that exists. Like, whoever thinks that it's a good idea to just be bad vibes when it's your job to, like, hype up the game and be a good cast. Why is everybody saying Dazarin? That's not who I was thinking of uh, at all. He's great. Dazarin's phenomenal vibes. Uh, but um, sometimes casters say that as a joke, and that's fine. Because if somebody is like joking or yeah, like you mentioned a team stream, that's different entirely. But I'm talking like just a normal stream, not joking. If people are, if a caster's vibe and mood is that they're annoyed to have to cast a game, uh, I don't get that. And yeah, there's also like, I've, I've said this before, but some casters seem obsessed with being edgy and cringe and they're like, quirky and trying to make the viewer feel uncomfortable i don't know why anybody would ever want to make a viewer feel uncomfortable they're there to watch the game and you're there on the mic it's your job to blend in uh not ruin their vibe don't kill their vibe basically like it, it, one of the main jobs of a caster is not to ruin somebody's vibe they're probably having a great time watching don't ruin it with your terrible like cringe quirky behavior just be normal <laughs> just be normal be, uh, have good vibes, be genuine and try and be smart and exciting. You know, it's not that hard, right? <laughs> it's not that long of a list of things to do. Uh, what are your favorite three games that aren't Rocket League? I've been playing a bit of V-Rising recently. It's really fun. Uh, played a bit of Golf with Friends the other day. That was fun as well. Um, played a little bit of League of Legends. That was not fun. League of Legends is a terrible game. Don't know what made me think that that, that would be a good idea. Um, <laughs> no, it's actually a good game. It's a fun game with friends. Uh, do I like Counter Strike? I like watching it. I don't. I don't like playing. I don't like playing uh, FPS. Playing FPS is pretty repetitive for me. I'm like, oh, click on the heads. Oh, click on more heads. <laughs> it's like I don't enjoy playing it, but I love watching it. I like seeing people click on heads very accurately. When I play, it's just like I'm trying to click on the heads, but I misclick. That's not fun. <laughs> I'd rather watch somebody who's good at it. Um, 
Right. What's the funniest thing you've ever seen experienced related to Rocket League? Ooh. Uh, you like the golf type casting for one of the uh, matches in Turbo Antics and one of the, oh yeah, that event in Turbo. I know the one you mean. Uh, the Turbo event was when Guild were uh, called out by Rettles on Twitter and it turned into a whole event on my Twitch stream where we got Mickey Moon trending on Twitter. Um, a little bit of help from Rizzo and Turbo and uh, Dazarin on that one. Uh, golf casting is pretty funny in Rock League as well, yeah. We did that on the grid with Smellsworth. Uh, funniest thing I've ever... like the For some reason, when you said what's the funniest thing you've seen this Rock League related, the first thing that came to mind was, do you guys remember when Stumpy was playing against Kaylee in, in uh, Salt Mine, in Salt Mine Underground, and then he demoed Kaylee, and the ball hit, it, the ball was going towards his goal, and uh, he demoed Kaylee so she couldn't score it, and the ball hit the post, and it bounced way up in the air, and then Stumpy, thinking to himself, I'm such a genius, I don't need to do anything about that ball, I'm just going to go get boost, then I'm going to come back, and the ball will still be there for me when I arrive. But when he went to get boost, the ball landed, spun on the ground and bounced into his net. And he came back and he was like, what? He was still surprised. He's like, what is this? Psionics, please. What? So yeah, that that was very funny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Throg absolutely killed me when Rettles changed um, Rogue's name in the grid to Throg. That was funny. That was very funny. I also really enjoyed watching back the Rogue stream and seeing how annoyed they all were. I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> I can't believe they're all so bothered by this. <laughs> and we were just messing around. Yeah, first and friends and Throg. That was funny. Yeah, I'm saying, oh, there's so many moments. On it, or, or when Epic Toasty and me were trying to break the puck world, the fastest goal, goal world record and I was sitting on the puck and he tried to pinch it and he just landed on me and the puck didn't move. <laughs> you guys remember that one? That was that was insane. Yeah, a lot of funny moments, man. We need to make another funny moments video. I think it's time. There've been quite a few. That was a classic. I I actually nearly died laughing when that happened. Uh, <laughs> couldn't breathe. Uh, right. What do you think would be the best thing for Sionix Epic Games to do in order to increase the game's popularity? Well, I think team mode, but uh, I've already talked about that, so I don't need to explain it again. Uh, you know, but anything that lets people play with their friends. Uh, in a competitive environment has got to be a good thing because that's what that's what really I think all of my you know when I was really addicted to playing Rocket League that's what I was doing I was playing ranked with my friends and then when the ranked system changed I couldn't do that anymore because all of us are different ranks now so it became more of a solo game and that's when it wasn't as fun to play for me uh, but I still love casting it every uh, as much as I ever have but yeah what do you guys think in chat type 1 in chat if you would prefer if you could just queue up and ranked with anyone and get your average MMR to match make instead of um, highest person in the lobby's MMR. Because the downside is you might queue up in a game and the other team have got one, one really good player and one terrible player and one okay player. Um, if you don't like that, then you're probably not going to like team mode, my suggestion, because... Uh, you want to know all, that all the three players you're up against are at a similar level. But for me, that doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't take very long to, like, figure out who the good player is, you know? Like, uh, you just know who the good player is. You're like, oh, yeah, this guy's good. Got to watch out for him. This this guy's terrible. Give him the ball, you know? It's like a strategy at that point. It's like when you're going to play sports. You You know, if you're playing real sports... Very rarely would a team that you're up against be all the same level. Like, they've usually got a star player and a terrible player. You just give the terrible player the ball. <laughs> Man mark the good player. What made you get into casting? Uh, I told this story a few times, but short story is Scrub and Marky Duda. They were two friends of mine from way back in the day. Uh, they were 1v1ing, and I asked if I could watch. And uh, I was streaming at the time. And my viewers told me to cast, so I just did some live analysis. And now I'm a caster. Um... Uh, There's a woman, we're not talking about that though. We're not saying that, wouldn't it be good if there was a smurf in the lobby whose rank is not actually their rank uh, and they're actually way better than their rating? No, I'm saying that if if you've got a 2,000 MMR person and a 1,500 MMR person and a 1,000 MMR person and they all play together, their team rating should be 1,500, not 2K. Because if right now, if you queue up with an SSL, uh, a Grand Champ 1 and a Diamond 1, and you play against three SSLs, you're going to lose. 
But if you're an SSL, a Diamond 1, and a Grand Champ, and you play against three Grand Champs, it's probably going to be a close game. You know? That's, that's what I prefer. I prefer. I just like close games. I like queuing up in ranked and getting good games. Uh, so that, that, that's what team, made me, team, mode, team mode would be good at. Favorite casting partner? Shogun. We've uh, casted together for years. Uh, we're always trying to improve. We, uh, I think we work really well together as a team. And we have a lot of the same goals. So yeah, Shogun. Uh, always have liked casting with Shogun. And glad that we get to do so as much as we can. I, I, I think back in the day, casting used to be a lot more of a switch up. Like you'd cast with one person, then another person, then another person. You constantly change. But uh, Shogun and I found that actually casting together a lot really helped us improve uh, a ton because you can build synergy um, and start to, uh, you know, really improve as a duo. So these days, most of the casters you see will be combos, or most of the most of mostly the favorite casters of people these days are are combinations of casters, not one caster, which I think is a good thing. What do you look for in a player before inviting them to play in a 1v1 show match? Uh, consistently high rating, or maybe they got recommended by someone who's a verified show match player. Um, or maybe I've seen them play someone's stream and I saw that they're good. Various things. Uh, what are some important things you've learned in terms of being successful in 1v1 from watching pro players? Mechanics, tactics, mentality. Uh, ball pressure is super important. Uh, it's more important than boost most of the time. And it's more important than, uh, you know, trying to fake challenges and shadow it, the most important thing to learn if you want to get good in ones or improve at ones is aggression uh when you don't have the ball be aggressive try and get it back that's the most important thing uh what's the most impressive show match win streak uh probably the fairy peak win streak that spanned over a year and it was i think it was like 16 or 17 matches where he didn't even go to the ace match at all he just smashed everybody um and even when he when that streak got beaten he went straight back to winning anyway so yeah that that was probably the best one for two years he was just the best player do i separate tournament matches from show matches yeah tournament matches i tend to put a little bit higher if it's a big tournament small tournaments probably show matches could be more prestigious it depends on the show match and the tournament um but yeah it's all situational top three rock league matches ever in my opinion Ooh, could be rlcs 1v1 or whatever um, it's really hard to compare 1v1 to RLCS because they're, they're so different. Uh, but my, you know, top three RLCS matches ever, um, NRG Dignitas Season 5, of course. Uh, for me personally, Flipside Season 2, the reverse, uh, or the bracket reset and win in Amsterdam. Uh, first time, uh, first bracket reset win in RLCS history on a LAN, so that's up there. Um, you see, yeah, flip side versus market, NRG versus Dignitas. Uh, third, probably. It might, I don't know, maybe Queso, uh, Queso G2, but that could be. That could be recency bias. I mean, top three is so vague. I don't know what top three means. <laughs> top three, what is it? My favorite matches ever? I mean, yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, 1v1. Fairy Peak Khaled, obviously. Uh, then you've got to go with... Ah, this is tough. What, what were you guys... What do you guys say? Probably Fairy Peak Khaled, Jory is up, Jack. So yeah, the Fusion Grand Final, Smug 6 Grand Final, or Main Event, I should say, Smug 6 Main Event. Um, yeah, Firewall First Killer is always very memorable. Firewall First Killer is pretty crazy. Yeah, Khaled, Jory is as well. There's a lot of crazy matches. Um, okay, how did I get my start? I think I already talked about that. Um, yeah, I was just I was just uh, streaming for fun and casted because people liked it. Casted once, people liked it. I did it again, people liked it. I kept going. <laughs> Don't worry, I've been here since 20k. I should be there for the sub two. Oh, thank you, man. 
Out of all your 2000 uploads, which one is your favorite and why? Also, congrats on 2000. Uh, favorite upload. I th okay, hold on. Let me let me go to my let me go to my YouTube channel and check how many views this video has. Okay, I'm very proud of the fact that bronze bot, no, bronze player against all-star bot hit a million views. That's pretty funny to me. The fact that we managed to get a bronze uh player versus an all-star bot to a million views. Like I can't, the fact that I cast it down and got a million views, I'm pretty proud of that one. Um also, I'm really glad that the drop shot challenge I did with Toasty, Epic Toasty, blew up. That's got 1.1 million views now. When I uploaded that, the first 24 hours, it got like 30k. It was like my normal like 20 to 30k in the first 24 hours. Maybe 20k. Like usually in the first 24 hours, my videos do like 20 or 30k. Uh, and it's always been like that. I don't know why. My channel's super consistent. <laughs> it's, it's been the same the entire time. Everybody else's channel's fluctuating like crazy. My one's just like doing the same numbers since the start. But... Uh, <laughs> The drop shot challenge didn't do well at the beginning, so I was really happy that that did pop off eventually. Because I thought that's a really fun video. I, I really enjoyed streaming that, the drop shot challenge with Toasty. So yeah, drop shot challenge, all star bot versus bronze. Those two videos I'm very proud of. Because uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure if they would get that high. I've also got an almost 900k view video on a bronze silver tournament, which I really enjoyed. Man, I wish it was like easier to cast bronze silver tournaments without smurfs being a problem i would cast those so often if that was possible but smurfs are an issue so i can't yeah all the low ranked casts essentially i love i love those they're, they're the videos i'm really proud of because i think in a, in a low ranked game like it's kind of make or break on the commentary uh so uh, i i could yeah i could take a lot of pride in those coil twitch but thanks 100 bits and also tier one from uh Curural. Kairu RL maybe <laughs> would be a better way to say that. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, same thing with like, you know, Sunless Can's RLBS. Like casting on that, if the casting isn't good, the video is not good. So like when you can nail the cast on like a low rated game where it isn't exciting, but you make it exciting anyway, that's always something uh, uh, that's really fun to do. Uh, is Gamers Without Borders only EU NA? Uh, I think Mina is listed on the Wikipedia page. Who knows? Maybe Sam OCE as well. Favorite game series you casted? I think we already talked about that. Oh, maybe not that I casted. Okay, fam, fam, favorite that I casted? Um, I mean, they say uh, all the one v ones I mentioned earlier were really fun to cast. Firewall, First Killer, Khaled, uh, uh, Khaled Fairy Peak, uh, Joria's Jack, um, and more. But for three v three, my favorite casts, uh, probably just this season of RLCS, uh, with the yeah Ahmad scoring against G2, that was unbelievable to watch and cast. Um, the whole series was just crazy. G yeah, G2 SRG, BDS NRG was ridiculous as well. Uh, so hype. The first major back, first first like players on land back in two years, and then yeah, G2 Queso, super insane. So yeah, those three that I mentioned already, were they were probably my favorite to cast. But apart from that, uh, I really enjoyed casting DreamHacks in 2019. And I also really enjoyed casting Beyond the Summit in 2019. 2019 was a really fun year for me because I didn't cast any lands at all in 2018. And then in 2019, I casted DreamHack Leipzig, DreamHack Valencia, DreamHack Montreal, and Beyond the Summit uh, in LA. So I casted four, four lands that year. And they were all so, so fun. Um, and I feel like me and Shogun, who casted, we casted all the DreamHacks together. I feel like we improved a lot in those events. So that was really fun as well, for that reason as well. Uh, in competitive Rocket League, to what extent is age a handicap? Uh, we actually talked about this earlier, so there's an age question above that I've already specifically uh, answered this. What are some of your favorite memories in the Rocket League scene? Okay, well, outside of casting, I, I really, uh, you know, still almost can't believe Season 1 happened. Season 1 of RLCS happened. Uh, the, the venue, I think, was like a strip club. <laughs> I think it was a strip club. It wasn't a strip club when the event happened, but I'm pretty sure that the Avalon... Uh, the Avalon Theater is a strip club. That's kind of hilarious to look back on. Uh, but yeah, that, that event was mad. Uh, just meeting everybody for the first time. Um, so yeah, uh, season one was a blast. Season two, also a blast. You know, uh, w uh, I, I was manager of Flipside when they won season uh, two. So that was insane. Um, yeah, the, the early seasons are, all, are always extremely memorable. Um, yeah, see, apart from that, I, I mean, I loved all the lands I went to as a fan as well. I went to season five, six, 
as a fan. I uh, had a great time at those. Season three, I was there managing F3. Um, I wasn't at season seven. Season eight, I was working. But yeah, I mean, my favorite memories are usually when I wasn't working. Because, <laughs> yeah, when you're working, you have to actually focus on doing a good job. When you're just at the line for fun, it's it's a blast. So if, if you haven't got your tickets already, check if, they, check if they're still available. You will not regret it. Top three most overrated players in North America and Europe. Oh, that is... A really harsh question. <laughs> it's a really harsh question. I mean, in order for somebody to be overrated, they need to be extremely popular and they need to uh, either have been really, really good at some point and either not as good or they need to have ridiculous potential that they haven't achieved yet. Um, overrated. I don't know if I even want to answer that. <laughs> Just too harsh. It's too harsh. Uh, no, I feel like nothing good can come from this. <laughs> I've got no good answers. I've got no good answers for you. Why didn't you just type underrated? And then I'll say underrated instead. How about that? Should I say underrated instead? Because no good can come from this. Like, this will be the only... Me, me saying which, which players are overrated will be the only clip. It'll be the only clip of the entire stream that makes Rocket League Esports write it and they all cry. So let's just skip that. Underrated players... Let's do underrated players uh, in um, North America and Europe. Underrated. What do you guys think? Who are the most underrated players? Let's start off in North America. Who are the most underrated players? I actually forget who who said it. But somebody said Toasty um, for Oxygen Esports in answer to that question. Somebody said Toasty, and I really like that answer, because LJ is always rated on that team, Gimmick's always rated, but never Toasty. So I like Toasty. Toasty is a good one for underrated in uh, NA. I don't think anyone on NRG, Phase G2, Complexity, V1, NV, Space Station is underrated. Um, oh, yeah, it was, Sh was it Shock who said it? I think it was Shock. Yeah, it's a good answer. Toasty is a great answer for that, so I'll say Toasty as well. Um... Maybe the only player who's underrated from the big teams would be uh, possibly Dries. I think Dries might still be underrated just because of the success that his former team has had. Um, and what's another player who's definitely underrated? Hmm... Hmm, that's, it's really tough. It's probably someone like Zanil. Because Zanil came onto Torrent when they were kind of, they'd fallen out of the top tier. And there wasn't all that much fuss about him coming on. Because um, they didn't immediately have success. But last event they did pretty well. So yeah, maybe that's the three... Maybe that's the three. Underrated in NA. Toasty, Dries, and Neil. Andy carried me 1v3. Yeah, I can't say Andy's underrated though, because yeah, my chat knows about Andy. <laughs> so everybody knows him. Uh, Illusion. I don't think Illusion's underrated. I think what he did at the, at the Fall Major is rated very highly. Uh, okay, for Europe, top three underrated players. Obviously nobody on BDS, Dignitas. Uh, I don't think anybody on Endpoint either. Uh... Until this weekend, until this weekend, I think Astro was probably underrated. And the reason why Astro was underrated was because so many of the takes I hear about Astro are saying that this guy is so toxic and every time his team's doing badly, people are like, yep, Astro's mental is a problem. When really nobody knows anything about that. Like 99.999% of the people who are making that take have no clue what any of the players uh, are bringing to a team behind the scenes. Everybody just likes to hate him, and I think that means he's underrated because people aren't just on. They're, it's not that they're not rating him; they're rating him badly when he's actually still ins an insane player. So I think Astral is underrated because, uh, well, especially before this weekend, because I still rated. I mean, I still rated him, uh, and I feel like anytime I bring up the fact that I think he doesn't actually bring down team vibes, it gets shut down. People are like, "Boo! We don't like that take." What's up, Nolly? Good work this weekend. Good work. 
I heard you were trending in France. That's sick. Um, so yeah, Azrael's probably underrated. Um, I think Devo's probably underrated as well because for the longest time, Guild were struggling and looking very normal. But I don't know. I think the the end of last split, start of this, or no, this split, I think they've looked pretty good. I think Devo's look very consistent. I think Devo's underrated. Um, who else is underrated? Um, I don't think Metza's underrated. I think people rate Metza and Point have been too good. They've been too good for anyone to be underrated. Misfits have been too good for anyone to be underrated. They've choked a bunch of times, but they're still rated. Um, underrated. So, I mean, everybody's just so rated these days. <laughs> everybody's rated. Maybe Exotic, but I rated him, so I don't know if he's underrated. Is, un is Exotic underrated? I rated Exotic uh, before he joined Semper, but I don't think many other people did. So maybe that makes him one of the most underrated. Or Mike Boy. Maybe Mike Boy's underrated, but they just had a really good event, so maybe not anymore. I guess, like, it's hard right now because a lot of the underrated players actually did well. Maybe Hibs. Hibs is actually pretty pretty underrated, I would say. Because he's playing with Flame, who's had a lot of past success. Uh, and Breezy, who um, is quite a well-known player. Tox is underrated. No, he's not. What do you mean, Tox is underrated? None of that team's underrated. Tox, Ixo, and Atomic are all rated. Um, hmm. Hard to think of underrated players. Everybody's rated. I mean, there's. I see the reason why players are rated a lot more accurately now is because there's more talk about more teams. Uh, EU especially is getting a lot more attention these days. That means that there's less underrated EU players. But there used to be a lot of underrated EU players because a bunch of the NA scene during RLCS Season X just didn't watch NA or they didn't watch EU, and then they declared NA the best region based on nothing, and then it turned out that wasn't actually true. And they started watching EU and they're like, wait, this is actually sick. And now EU gets a lot more attention from the people with loud mouths in the Rocket League scene. And people know how good all the players are. Uh, so yeah, less underrated players now. What keeps you motivated to stream into YouTube? Have you maintained consi How have you maintained consistency for so many years? Have you ever thought of quitting? Uh, I've never thought of quitting, no. Um, because I enjoy it. Now, I started off streaming for fun. So the fact that I do it now as part of my job, uh, you know, I stream and I make YouTube content occasionally and I cast, uh, sometimes organize tournaments. You know, I, I do a, 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 a variety of things, I guess. But I've always, you know, wanted to do it and I enjoy it. So that's one of the reasons I kept, uh, kept going. Um, but as far as consistency goes, I just never push myself too hard. I think a lot of content creators push themselves way too hard they go really, really intensely on the content grind for like a month, burn themselves out, then they stop, and then it's hard to get going again once you've stopped. As with any habit, like you guys who have, you know, done something, uh, like maybe you've worked out for a whole month or two months, then you take one week off and it's really hard to get back into the, uh, you know, the swing of things. Content's kind of like that. Like you've got to have a plan. You've got to stick to it. You can't, uh, you know, you can't, push yourself like crazy to make as much content as you can in a month and then expect that to be uh, like a you know sustainable thing. What You've got to just do what is sustainable or else it's not going to last. It's the same thing as like anything else in life. If you want to make something a habit, do it in a way that is sustainable, something that you can do long term. So the way I do content, I think is very sustainable. I don't stream too much. I don't, uh, you know, blitz out too many videos. I don't cast uh, uh, too much. I, I decline a lot of events because I know it's going to burn me out. Like you just try and pace yourself because it's a, it's a marathon. Someone attended the first line in London. Go to fly from NA and represent G2 Army. What is the most important thing I should do slash look out for? Uh, one thing that would, I think, be really fun for a lot of the people who are coming from abroad to a UK event is keep an eye out on Twitter. I know that myself and a lot of the other casters are going to be promoting uh, a bunch of uh, silly land chants that we're coming up for with for a lot of the teams. Um, and if you want to get, if you want to join in on them, just keep an eye on social media. Uh, you'll be able to find what all of those 
silly songs are because one of the big parts that made Landon so special the first time around is there was just a silly like chant for any situation oh you know player x is coming out on a walkout or he's being interviewed on stage we've got a chant for him and it just makes it so much more fun uh, and so much more hype and yeah you're definitely going to feel very at home as a g2 fan or a fan of any team in london because london is a lot more of a universal rocket league fan location than particular teams uh you know people are just there to make noise and have fun they're not really there to uh you know hope that a particular team wins and they're going to cry if they don't in your whole casting career what's the worst most wrong prediction you made man that's a tough one because i just don't remember ever getting anything wrong <laughs> actually i don't remember what the most wrong prediction is because I'm not, I'm not really afraid of making a bad prediction. I love making build predictions because if, if you only make safe predictions, it's really boring content. So I'm never afraid to make a build, build prediction that might not be right. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? What's my worst prediction? Because I, I don't know. I don't remember. Like I don't, tr I don't write this stuff down and think, oh, I'm so, so upset that I was wrong about this. Like, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, you're inevitably, especially if you're making a lot of Rock League predictions, you're going to be wrong all the time because Rock League is so, so difficult to um, to predict. Fall Major? What do you mean Fall Major? I think I I did pretty well at the Fall Major. I predicted uh, Sandrock doing well. I predicted NRG coming second. Uh, I predicted EU winning. Not the right team, though. <laughs> but yeah, one of the things that um, is really interesting about uh, Rock League predictions is if, if you make a prediction uh, at the start of a season and then halfway through the season something massive changes with a team or a player that you made a prediction about and it goes against what you've said people will still hold you to the original prediction even though circumstances have changed it's like it doesn't matter if an entire team changes people will be like you said this team was going to do well I'm like well yeah but they had three different players back then <laughs> you know People still hold it, hold you to it. It's so funny. Uh, how many have you taken down after uploading? Only a handful, to be honest. I think I took down a few videos after uploading because um, I didn't like them. Like I uploaded them and I was like, I don't, I just don't like this video. This is a bad video. <laughs> I've never taken down a video because I thought, oh boy, this is embarrassing. I, I sound like such an idiot when I'm casting back in the day. I never took a video down for this, but sometimes uh, I would just like cast a match and think, I've just done a really, this is just a bad video. I've done a bad job here. It was a terrible stream. I was in a bad mood or whatever. I should not have streamed. What was I thinking? Because uh, sometimes uh, you just force yourself to stream and you really just shouldn't because you're like in a bad mood or you're really, really tired. But yeah, I've, I've removed a few or I've un unlisted a few videos for various reasons, but very, very few, very few. Um, I know some people like delete any video older than a year because they're just like, oh, my old content, boo, but I don't really mind. <laughs> Squishy video kicked W, bad video. Yeah, that was a terrible video, obviously. Had to get rid of that one. Um, ever wanted to plan to make a different style YouTube channel for other types of content, Rock League related or not? Not really. Um, I think introducing 1v on RLCS scene would be good. Why hasn't it been done yet? Probably hasn't been done because there's already enough changes being made with threes to think about a bigger change like that. But uh, I think introducing one to RLCS would be a great idea and it would it would be really uh, good for the variety of the scene. Uh, the variety of the eSport. What's your favorite Rock League player from each region that you follow for each category? Personality? Ooh. Well, I mean, I, f I kind of follow all the regions. So uh, instead of answering for all the regions, because that'll take a while, I'll just say uh, each individually. Uh, personality, uh, definitely CJ, CJ. Uh, entertainment on the field, uh, probably Ahmad. And for skill, Monkey Moon. Okay. Back in 2020, the game went free to play. A lot of people gained a ton of subs. Why do you think you didn't receive the same bump in subs? I think they're, well, I mean, I, I don't know because I don't really understand how the YouTube algorithm works, but I, I think probably because my content is a bit more targeted to hardcore fans and a bit more targeted to people who follow the eSport. So new, sub, new people who just play Rock League once or twice because it's free to play, they're not going to look for my type of video. They're not going to be like, oh, let me watch this competitive tournament uh, content. They're probably going to go and watch some content of uh, uh, that's more targeted at that 
audience. So I think I had the wrong uh, target for that, but I didn't really, I didn't adapt my content at all to that. I enjoy making the content I make and that's why I make it. We consider changing up your content to fit today's YouTube standards. Uh, in some ways, like I'm experimenting right now with not doing the um, the bumper plate at the end of videos that removes spoiler protection um, because uh, I wanted to see will it will that affect the algorithm at all in terms of recommended because I know that watch re view retention is a w is one of the things that YouTube cares about um, but not the actual content itself just how it's edited that's the only thing I'm really changing um, because yeah, like I said I I try to focus on things I enjoy and I enjoy I enjoy doing what I'm doing that's why I do it I don't like try I I, I for a while I don't know if you remember. Uh, maybe it's 2017 I tried to like do a bunch of clickbait videos like the Dominus Domino Effect video Floor is Lava uh, I can't even remember there was a bunch I put out a bunch of videos like this and a lot of them did really really well I think I actually smashed my viewer record in, in a month that month um, but it was so boring I just didn't enjoy it at all so I I went back to doing that more sporadically and kind of focusing on the content that I really have a passion for, which is uh, esports uh, content, 1v1 tournament tournaments and stuff. I just really have a passion for this because I, I, before I was a content creator, I was a person who was looking to watch that kind of content in uh, other uh, scenes. Those were hilarious. Yeah, some of them were, were good. I, I, I'm just more selective now with what I do. I don't just do them for the sake of, I don't just do it because I think it'll get views. I do it if I think it'll be fun as well. The last time you've been genuinely proud of yourself. Probably today. I thought uh, me and Shogun did a great job on Gamers Without Borders today. So I was proud of myself and uh, Shogun. Whoops. Uh, for that. But uh, how do you stop sucking at once? Ball chase more. Um, also learn how to do more than one kickoff. Um, what got you into the love of casting esports? I uh, Early day Rocket League casting was more hype based, not analysis. And I, I thought I would be uh, good at that. So that's what I did when I first started casting and people liked it. So. Um. Yeah, that's what that's uh, what got me into it. How do you define success in your esports career? In my esports career, and how has that definition changed since you first started making content? Oh, okay, it's mine. Um, success. Uh, it's, I don't know. I, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you know, are are you making it? I try to make a difference, like be a positive influence in the space. Like, am I doing that? That's that's one metric of success. You know, am I, you know, growing, you know, not, am I continuing to uh, grow as a streamer, as a caster, as a, uh, you know, influence in the space, I suppose. It, yes, that, that's like one thing I try to, I don't know, I'm trying to just improve. That's my metric of success is improvement. Uh, who in the scene do you look up to for inspiration? Um, hmm. I mean, this is a... This is a bit of a weird question because um, I think Rocket League is such a unique, it's such a unique thing. It's such a unique one. I'll answer that in a second though. You're allowed to say money. I mean, money's not everything. I actually made a lot more money on Twitch uh, in the past than I do now. But I think, I don't think it's like, because I was more successful on Twitch. Like when I made more money. Um, in fact, I don't know how much money <laughs> I'm making this month on Twitch. I don't know how much money I made last month on Twitch. I don't know how much money I made the previous month. Like, I'm in a position in my life where I don't really need to check, uh, like, what the monthly, you know, Twitch revenue is going to be. Or I don't need to, like, constantly check my bank account. And that's, like, I, I, something I'm really thankful for. And it's, it's something I know that most people can't do. Most people have to be careful because, or else, you know, you'll end up in, in the red. But I don't need to look, so I don't look, you know? Like, I get I get paid to cast, make, make a bit of money on Twitch, YouTube, sponsorships, um, some other uh, random stuff as well, some uh, consulting that I do. Um, you know, once you've got, uh, like, revenue streams, you don't need to worry about it so much. So, like, that's why I don't really think of money as... Well, it's not really something that I'm comparing current me to past me about if that's if that makes sense which is why i didn't answer money in answer to how do you define success because if i make less money one month than the previous month on twitch i wouldn't call that a less successful month in my esports career 
like it's just not how I compare the months. It's not how I compare what I do month to month. Um, it just isn't. I I don't know how else to explain it. It just isn't. Um, anyway, who in the scene to look up to for inspiration? See the the Rock League casting scene is at a really interesting place because I think everybody's improving as a team and everybody like it really is such a team effort to improve shows and to improve segments uh to improve desks uh segments and to improve like casting combinations it really just is a team effort nobody's like trying to one-up each other or at least i don't get the impression that anyone's trying to one-up each other so there isn't really like uh inspiration i guess in the rock league from within the rock league scene it's just everybody's a team um but i mentioned before I've mentioned this before on my stream that uh, outside the Rock League scene, before I was a, a Rock League caster, I used to watch a lot of StarCraft 2. I still do occasionally. And uh, I always loved listening to Artosis and Tasteless cast StarCraft 2. thought they had a really fun vibe. You know, it's just the same vibe that I go for with Rock League casting. You know, you want the viewer to just feel like you're their buddy and you're watching the game together. That's the, always the vibe I got. Um, so always loved that. And I got the same vibe. I used to watch a lot of League of Legends esports back in the day as well. Uh, after StarCraft 2 and you guys who watch League will know Kobe who still casts for League he gives a very similar vibe to Tasteless and Artosis where it's just like extremely positive vibes I don't know how else to describe it just never never uh, kills the viewers vibes which is good um, but as far as like you know inspiration I mean most of what I've learned through about Rocket League and applied to my casting has come from talking to pro players. I don't re remember learning something from a caster before. Don't think so. At least in terms of like game knowledge. But like I said, outside of game knowledge, everything that we learn as a as a team, the RLCS casters, it is like a team effort. Everybody talks together. Everybody's trying to improve. Yeah, the. the 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 casting job goes way beyond knowledge of the actual game of Rocket League. Uh, best series played. I think we talked about that. Oops. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll leave that one. We went over that earlier. Uh, when you first started streaming Rocket League, did you have any idea that you wanted to make it, or did you want to kind of let it evolve on its own? Um, when I first started streaming Rocket League, I just did it for fun. I was just playing Rocket League with my friends, and uh, that was it. There wasn't really any goal. Um, but yeah, when I started casting ones, I was like, this is really fun. Um, I'm doing something that no one else is doing. So I'm going to keep doing that because people seem to like this content. And I know that if someone else was doing this, I would like watching. So I just did it because I enjoyed it. And because I know that's the type of content I would be a consumer of if, uh, if I wasn't doing it. Uh, so yeah, that's how I got started. How do you want to see more 1v1 content integrated into the RL Esports broadcasts themselves? Um, I think like little tournaments uh, being, or I think RLCS should host a 1v1 tournament at some point, like an official or like RLCS channel 1v1 tournament for all the best players. That would be the best start. And then full circuit integration would be awesome. Further down the uh, down line. Best current team for crew battles formats, you reckon maybe Falcons? I think Falcons, FaZe, and Dignitas, BDS, SS3, that's my top five. Because SSG have Daniel, Falcons have got a bunch of ones players, uh, namely probably Khaled, but TRK as well. Uh, FaZe have got First Killer AJ, uh, Dignitas have got Jack Dorias. Uh, BDS have got Monkey Moon for ones, which is not as good as the other teams I mentioned, but Monkey Moon's the best twos player in the world, uh, and BDS are probably the best three team in the world, so you can't neglect them in that format either. Uh, would you be interested in some capacity a league where someone can buy in for the right to own and run his her team customized contracts to players pre undetermined pool oh man I don't know I, I'm not a fan of leagues uh, in Rocket League I like the open format the circuit way more and I I like that the players own the spots not the teams as well whereas this sounds like a suggestion where the team would own the spots and you're transferring the players I think the player stability of owning the spots is better but uh I don't know. I haven't thought about that too much because I don't really think about leagues. I don't like them. Teams start winning. After the timeout, we don't notice what changed. They just start winning. Uh, is that the vibe that you guys in Twitch chat get? Do you think that it isn't talked about? I mean, I imagine if, if, if 
viewers don't notice what changed after timeouts, is that the fault of the caster or the casters? Do you think that's the fault of the casters? Yeah, sometimes I know that teams just, sometimes they take timeouts just to go to the bathroom or just to like chill for a minute, you know, try and like kill the momentum of the other team. Um, you call me Ruben, thanks to the 12 month prime. Welcome back to the channel, man. But no, yeah, uh, overall, timeouts have often led to, I think the vast majority of teams who call a timeout win the next game. It's like 70% or more. So it's really, really high. That's a really high number for a game like Rocket League to be losing a series, call a timeout, and then win the next game. It's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, I always try and point out diff things that teams are doing differently in my uh, casts, but if this is how you feel, then I'm sorry I've let you down. <laughs> I'll try to do better. <laughs> yeah, I thought... Uh, I, I think I noticed some things. What rank do you need to be to earn money from esports or any kind of comp play? You want to have a goal in mind as a C2. Uh, I really think that in terms of earning money, you should not be worried about that as a C2. As C2, all you should try and do is have fun with the game. That's all you should try and do. Because it's a long way to get into the point where you earn money uh, off of comp from C2. Not even point. There's no point thinking about that. Because all it will do is it will make every time that you get further away from that goal. Because when you're C2 and you want to be, if you want to become pro, really. You're going to go like forward, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. It's not like a linear route. It's very windy. You're going to have peak slump, peak slump, peak slump, plateau, peak slump. If you really make it that far, you're going to go through so many ups and downs. And if you've got that goal in mind of I need to be a pro earning money, every time you slump, it's just going to make your mental uh, chalked. You're, you're just going to be in the bin. So just honestly, just try and have fun. Enjoy it. Uh, and if you're in champ two, stop blaming your teammates, probably. But <laughs> no, nah, not really. Not that last bit. Well, I obviously don't blame them, but I'm sure you're not doing that. Uh, player you think has great potential but never made it into the top eight? Hmm. Did Dead Monster ever make it into a top eight? Yeah, because he's, he's got great potential. <clears throat> Any SA players to look forward to seeing at Worlds? Uh, Snowy. The Sub-Saharan Africa player who uh, I've casted a show match of against Jorias before. Really, really looking forward to seeing Snowy at Worlds. Um, future 1v1, we talked about that already. What team will split up first, NRG or Dignitas? Ooh, no, the spicy questions. What do you guys in chat think? What team will split up first, NRG or Dig? I think most people are saying Dignitas. A couple of people saying NRG. It's a tough one. Um, I think based on the way things are currently going, you'd have to say Dig, but both teams have got the potential to turn around their seasons. Dignitas don't look like they're going to make the Spring Major, but they do look like they're going to make Worlds. So if they're making Worlds, they've just got to like, I think, take a break, you know, after the after the next regional, take a break, maybe a, maybe even like a month off, just chill, no scrims, nothing, just you know, a little bit of a break here, because clearly it's gone wrong this split, um, and then come back with a vengeance and build up to worlds, like try and peak at the right time, try and hit another honeymoon phase. For NRG, they look like they could still make the spring major. In fact, I think they will. I think they're going to regain and make a deep run. Their plot armor is too good. So uh, I have to say dig because NRG look like they're making spring major. Most entertaining player to cast current all time. I think I talked about that already. Um, next up and comer. Uh, I pointed out Stizzy to the First Touch podcast last week. I think he had a great uh, tournament. Also, Joyo said on uh, mine and Rizzo's podcast that you can see the link to below the stream in a big button. You should click that. Uh, to follow on Spotify. Uh, Joyo told us about Juicy. He said he thinks Juicy is going to be the next up-and-comer, and I got a chance to cast him today in Games Without Borders. He was really, really good. So, definitely him. Uh, yeah, Rawas in Middle East as well is going to be unbelievable. Uh, that guy's not going to be stopped. In your opinion, what's the best series ever played? I think we talked about that already. Well, if you're talking about best, like, highest level of play ever played, um, I mean, inevitably, it would have to be G2 Queso, right? But... Grand, I mean, if you're talking about best series ever played on LAN, yeah, it would have to be G2 Queso, but you 
Can't compare LAN to online play. LAN play is always more shaky. Go to Grub and Pint. I don't really go to a lot of bars because, well, a lot of Grub and Pint bars because uh, my girlfriend hates them. And usually when we're going out, we go to places we both like. So nowhere these days. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Hey, Aegis, 1v1 League thoughts? 1v1 circuit. How about that? Even better. No league, circuit. Perception of competency changed since you started? Um, I don't know really what the answer is. That's a vague question. But uh, I think one thing that I've realized is the importance of the uh, comedy and content and bits compared to actual analysis on the analysis desk. I think it's time to rename the analysis desk to the content desk because it's not analysis anymore. It's just content, but it's better than the analysis desk. <laughs> How many videos are uploaded to YouTube? Uh, right now, 1999. Probably a bit more, but I can't remember how many I've unlisted. Not many. Hardest thing to remember about casting well in RLCS, new formats or something else, and why? Uh, new formats are never really that hard to wrap my head around, because I'm a format nerd. I love love reading about formats and figuring them out, so that's never difficult for me. But uh, hardest thing to remember about casting well in RLCS. I mean, at this point, it's, we've done it so much, nothing really is difficult. It's automatic, kind of. Uh, it really just feels like riding a bike, honestly. It's uh, We do it every week, or we do it so often that there's, nothing's really that difficult about it anymore. Um, it's not even, like... I know one of the difficult things during COVID was to still have the same um, excitement because we... Well, like, let's be honest, during COVID, we were really only excited for the, when the LAN would finally come back, when LANs would finally come back. And when it was just online, 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 that was difficult to, you know, keep the excitement up. Um, and I think with different casting teams, it would have been really hard. But luckily, all the casting team, we really like uh, hanging out together and putting on a good show. We love working with our producer, uh, Johan. So it's all, it's just a blast. Even during COVID, we were having a good time. But yeah, that was probably the hard part is trying to keep the hype up for an event we knew wasn't going to a LAN. Uh, how did you even get into casting? We talked about that already. Did anyone scout me? Well, kind of a couple people would like saw me casting on my stream and they asked me if I would do tournaments. Um, people like Cloud Fuel, CJ Link, uh, probably others, but uh, 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 I'll inevitably forget names here. Um, would you rather be a bee or a wasp? Oh my goodness, what a question. That's tough. How long do wasps live for? Do they just like live forever stinging people? Wasp lifetime 12 to 22 days really they only live like 20 days and they still go around stinging people is there nothing better to do you're only alive for 20 days for goodness sake bees are like 40 days i think i think i say bees they've got a pretty cool community plus they've got their queen you guys probably all want to be bees twitch viewers love uh they, they've all got their uh queen queens right arrow is lost thanks for the two month pride and welcome back to the channel man uh, thanks for thanks to, for the kind words, Trash Day. Will says, "Did you ever want to go pro at any point when you start playing Rocket League?" I mean, <laughs> listen, getting paid to play a video game is a pretty cool thing in theory, but uh, I knew very early on there's no shot I'm ever pro in this game, no chance. Uh, so no, <laughs> I was very realistic. All right, did you get to a caster? Already talked about that one. Uh, do you plan on hosting custom map show matches? Uh, yeah, I love I love doing custom map show matches. Had a great uh, few, had a couple of really cool collaborations with Lethemir. Maybe we could do more of those. I want to cast on his new map that he made, his new standard map, actually. Uh, what's your overall opinion of Justin and his contribution to the game? One of the greatest of all time, uh, not just on the field, but also just a really, really awesome guy. Uh, really, really, every time that I run into him at another event. I'm just glad that he made it so that I can say hi to him again. Uh, hopefully they make London so so I can say hello. And because they're really fun as well to watch and they're a good team. But mainly so I can say hi to the guy because he's an awesome guy. You need one pro to win you a game. 3-2 down, 30 seconds left. Who are you choosing? Well, are we talking about threes? I think there's only one answer to that. Chat, answer the question. We know who it is. Who scores the most equalizers in the last 30 seconds of games? There's only one answer. Of course, it's Moisturize. Um, but for 1v1, probably would have to be Khaled because he always has the he always has the last minute strats. 
What do you say is the best way to improve at Rock League, whatever your rank is at? Uh, genuinely, just have fun. You're not going to improve if you're raging. Uh, also, yeah, voice chat is so good. Honestly, use voice chat because you can untilt people. If you just or if you just have good vibes in voice chat, I think your win rate is going to go up. <laughs> really. Do fish get thirsty? That's a great question. I never thought about that. Uh, will you ever call a musty flick a musty flick? Probably not because I don't think a lot of the things that people call musty flicks are even musty flicks. I mean, people just see a backflip and they're like, musty flick. But, I mean, is every... Every sidewall pinch a cuxer pinch? No, I don't think so. I think like when cuxer started pinching, he had a very particular technique where he would f double jump. He'd, he'd hit the ball to the sidewall and he'd double jump while flying into the ball, almost flatten the Batmobile and literally just pinch it. And then after a while, he started single jumping and dodging, but again, hitting it with the side of the car. And then uh, a bunch of other players started doing like a air roll 90 degrees front flip well pinch but that didn't start with cuxer he never did the, the the air roll version i think he still to this day does it his own way everybody's got their own different ways to do pinches so when i see you know one of the pinches where somebody air rolls sideways and front flips into the wall get called a cuxer pinch i'm thinking is it though is that a cuxer pinch i don't think it is i don't think cuxer has ever done that never mind invented that move um and in the same way like I think where it wasn't the original flick that Musty posted on Reddit. Um, like he had the ball on top of his car and then he like popped it, air rolled forwards and then backflipped into it, I think. Um, which is completely different than popping the ball, air rolling backwards and backflipping into it. It's, it's a different flick. And then you've also got players turning like, I don't know what Breezy does. I still don't know. I had to explain it like he's got his own way of getting into the position to backflip into the ball you've got other players who you know they they flip cancel halfway through the flick to delay it like there's so many different variations and if they're not all going to have their own unique name then none of them should in my opinion because like it just it's I think it, it's just lazy to see a pinch and call it a cuxer pinch it's just lazy casting to just name every pinch a cuxer pinch if you're going to name them all a cuxer pinch, just call it a pinch. If you're going to name every backflip <laughs> into the ball uh, a musty flick, then just call it a flick. Like they, they, They've got to all have like uh, more specific names. But like um, I can see why pros want to calm uh, in-game uh, and say like musty in-game. Because their teammates might know what they're going to do. Um, and it's a very... You don't really have a lot of time when you're hard coming to say lots of words. You just have to like... Blah, 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 just get it out there. Because you you, you, you got to speak quickly in Rock League. It's a very, very fast-paced game. But in casting, I think it's... Well, my philosophy has always been to try and just like... Be as normal as possible. I don't know. I don't want to like cast just for the hardcore fans who are going to know what something is. I want to like try and explain what actually happened in a way that a new viewer could understand, you know? And I don't just say, I don't just avoid saying one nickname that people have for one move. Uh, you know, I don't say a lot of other words that other casters say, like waterfall for like when the ball bounces down in front of the net. I'm not going to say that because people will be like, what do you mean waterfall? <laughs> I don't see a waterfall. You just say the ball bounced down, you know? You don't need to... I don't know why people are, are so obsessed with naming everything. I don't get it. It's like the freestyle community. They just name everything. <laughs> and they always name things like some like really ridiculous name that has nothing to do with what's actually happening visually. It's really difficult for people to understand why it would be called that. But yeah, I think it's, it, can, it can be very lazy casting. Some people are very lazy with their casting. They just see a backflip and they say musty. They see a pinch. They say cuxer. It's like, come on. That's not what happened. That doesn't explain what happened at all. In fact, you're like skipping over two or three very, very, you know, important things in the setup that actually made that move really special or made that goal really special. Say wave dash. Well, actually, wave dash has a lot of crossover because it even looks like a wave dash from another video game. So that has crossover, and it is a dash. You're you're dashing. So you know if it if it if it's uh, kind of a sensible word, I'm like. 
The most sensible freestyler word is what are they calling the backboard double a psycho? That's a. Uh, uh, who I can't remember who who said it. I thought it was quite funny that uh, it kind of makes sense because you got to be mad to try and double tap off your own backboard. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, fair enough. That's something, I guess. Look like Wave Dash from Celeste. I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, there's definitely Wave Dashes in other video games. But, but yeah, essentially, I feel like uh, you know it can be quite lazy in commentary to just like say all the buzzwords and then people will be like, ooh, look at that. He said all those buzzwords. What a great commentator. Uh, and I don't want to be, I don't know. I don't want to be lazy. I'm always like just trying to describe what happened in the best way possible for as many viewers as possible and point out all of the the little, like I, I'm usually like pointing out something very, very small or trying to point out something very, very small that a player did in order to make a flick possible or in order to make a, a, a ground shot possible um, like if somebody scores like a very particular type of shot but that's not the interesting part the interesting thing was that he you know did something two seconds ago that enabled him to be here in the first place I'll probably talk about the thing he did two seconds ago rather than you know the shot itself and like focus on naming it correctly but yeah people always bring up Musty because he's really popular but yeah I don't say Cucks or Punch either I don't say Breezy Flick I don't say like whatever there's probably other names and stuff I won't say because I'm like this doesn't help people understand what just happened um it's, it's usually better for new viewers to, to understand that when your car is pointing one way and you backflip your car will go backwards oh squishy saves another one yeah squishy saves another one that some people will say but actually the ogs will know that that's called a pilgrimage save like type one in chat if you know what a pilgrimage save is i don't say this either because again it's a kind of an in joke and it doesn't help people understand that someone is driving in and out of the net. But if you're a true OG, before Squishy even existed, Flipside Tactics were doing in and outs to just for no reason. And they called it a pilgrimage. And then somebody hit a pilgrimage save. And that was the first time I saw it. <laughs> way before anyone else. Before, way before season one of RLCS. Um... But just because nobody knows that, nobody will complain when I don't say it. Nobody's complaining I don't call it a pilgrimage save. But luckily, like, in and out save is just, like, a really fast... It, you can say it fast. It makes sense to some new viewer who saw somebody drive into the net and then out of the net, and they saved it. They'll be like, oh, I know what that is. I know what that refers to. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there was also, like, a, a time in Rock League Casting where people tried to make Spider-Man save a thing. And a Spider-Man save, I believe, was supposed to be when somebody jumps off the back wall to save something. And people wanted to call it a Spider-Man save. Or a Spider-Man clear when you jump off the back wall to clear the ball. And I, I just can't ever... No, I'm not saying this. Or like, people wanted ceiling shots to be called Tarzan swings. So yeah, instead of like picking and choosing which is good and which is good, I'll just, no, I'll just say what's actually happening. Like I can't keep up with all these Zoomer names you guys come up with. It's just cringe. Like I'll, I'll just say what's happening on the screen. And uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well for me up until now. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's too cringe for me, man. Tarzan swing is a good, is good Lamont. It is not good. It's cringe. Overall opinion of Cuxer and his contribution in the game, he, exp he he inspired a lot of the pros that you and I watch. He had one of the most unique ways to play, and yeah, just an all-around awesome guy. Uh, legend. Love to see him succeed. Uh, already talked about favorite players. Underrated and overlooked part of pro play. Well, funny, funny you should ask, uh, because now that crew battles are back in the menu, now that we've got gamers without borders again. I think we can all agree that kickoffs are now the most underrated aspect of pro play because pros are doing it in Gamers Light Borders and nobody rates it. Nobody even knows that it's a skill. Everybody just thinks that it's random and that you just flip into the ball and hope for the best. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to educate people, trying to explain why certain kickoffs work and certain kickoffs don't and what the different versions of kickoffs are. Um, but yeah, kickoffs are probably the most underrated and overlooked part of pro play, not just in ones, but also in threes. Kickoffs are so, so overlooked by everybody. It's treated like a random outcome. 
Like when I say kickoff goal, a lot of people will be like, oh, yuck. But actually a kickoff goal might have been a, a really, really big mind game, like win or like a very well executed uh, strategy. But people cringe when they hear kickoff goal because they're so indoctrinated to believe it's luck. How can we as rock league players improve the community and support the pro scene? Um, how can rock league players improve the community? Uh, just, I don't know, be, be good to people is uh, the number one way to improve the community is just be good to people. Uh, you know, when you... Like, the Rock League community can be very hive-mindy at times. Like, it's almost not possible for, um, like, a Reddit thread to exist with multiple opinions in it. Like, as soon as a Reddit thread happens uh, and it gains a few upvotes, you'll never actually see a discussion. It'll always just be everybody trashing on someone or something. Um, and an example of this is not actually from the Rock League scene. But I saw a Reddit thread the other day that got me interested to click on it because it was about Moist Critical. Uh, obviously, Critical recently acquired a Rock League team, him and his org, Moist. Um, and I saw a Reddit thread that was just like a meme about his video format. And then there was just like so many comments just like trashing the guy. And I'm thinking, why? What, where have all these people been hiding all these uh, for all these years to now come out and express their dislike? It's mad. Like, it, it, let's say, uh, you know, tomorrow, someone in the Rock League scene has a bad day, tweets a bad take, and then they delete it later because they're like, ah, yeah, sorry, guys, that was a bad take. Whoops. There'll probably be a thread on Reddit and then there'll be like 50 replies being like, yeah, I never liked this guy. I always got a bad vibe. I always felt like he was, you know, weird. Uh, yeah, I couldn't really put my finger on why, but now it all makes sense. And there'll be, there'll be just all these comments, all like just trashing, trashing people for no reason. Like, oh, as if you've never had a bad tweet, if you've never had a bad take. Uh, nah, you've never done that. Uh-huh, sure. Like everybody just, um, yeah, very quick to pile on let's say. So probably a good thing, way to make the scene better would be not, not to pile on to people for no reason um, without properly investigating. Yeah, the, the first touch impressions. Yeah, when people were like complaining about the, the first touch guys um, on a thread about a video I made, I was like, what are people doing? This is crazy. Why are people attacking them? That's so uncalled for. Just like stick to the topic, have a discussion, stop being so weird. Best way to cook a potato gotta be mashed. Uh I don't think so. I mean it's gotta be chips, right? They're just undefeated. By chips, I mean fries for you Americans. Uh Salt Mine 3 I talked about this. Uh hopefully we can do one. No news yet. Go to McDonald's order. Probably just a bottle of water and uh where's the exit? Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. When I was sarcastic, I talked about this. Thought did a 4v4 show match. Uh, I don't really like 4v4 in the normal size map. It's too... Too... Uh, I don't know, packed. What were I doing before Rock League came out? I was job hunting as an engineer. I've got a structural engineering degree. Uh, any three, th threes matches that's memorable to you? That not many people talk about? Ooh. Memorable threes matchup that nobody talks about. What do you guys think is the answer to this question? That's a, that is a good question. Maybe RLCS uh, Season 9 Dignitas against Vitality where Dignitas destroyed everyone and they were just the best team in Europe. Everybody in the Season 9 era like looking back at season nine, which is a season that finished off online because of COVID, everybody just talks about how G2 beat NRG and G2 were the best team in the world and they would have won worlds. But I'm just thinking, why did Dignitas not got the, no, why did Dignitas never get the same praise? Oh wait, yeah, because all the people who talk about it didn't watch EU at the time. They only watched NA. But I, as someone who watched both NA and EU, uh, would have picked uh, Dig over anyone at that time. They looked crazy. Vitality looked every bit as good as a Season 7 Vitality who won uh, Worlds and got second to Season 8. 
Uh, in fact, better because they just picked up Alpha, to be honest. They were, they were nuts and Dignitas were somehow better than them. Uh, whereas NRG kind of fell off since Season 8 and ended up benching Turbo. So I think NA's top team, NRG, kind of fell off. EU's top team, Vitality, kind of got better and then somehow got surpassed. So that's like a, a series that not many people talk about. Everybody just talks about the G2 uh, Season 9 finish and just say, oh yeah, they were the best team in the world. But it's like, no, probably not. Probably Dignitas. We're up there. They were definitely in the conversation. It's not just about G2 that season. That would have been an Astral uh, LAN win if, the, if they'd won it, of course. Which would be pretty pog. Uh, what's my comfort food? Ooh. Like probably coffee, right? <laughs> That's a drink, though. I, I, yeah, I love coffee every day. Uh, comfort food, love some crisps. Um... Probably fruit pastels. Love fruit pastels. Did I miss old Rocket League with Scrub Leth and Fairy Peak dominating? Honestly, no. Um, like obviously it's fun to look back on and uh, it was a great uh you know, it was a great time. But current Rocket League is so much more entertaining, so no, I don't miss it. We talked about the best series of casted. Do you think energy will make major? I do. First video on YouTube along the journey, experience to Rocket League Esports, all the games casted, all the hot takes you made. How much your enormous nose affected your legacy? I don't know. I feel like it's uh, somehow become part of uh, my identity, but I don't know. I'm not bothered by it. Like I said at the start, like, people like, just made fun of the size of my nose, but I was like, cool. They can. I'll survive. I'll sleep at night. Favorite color? Uh, black, if you take that as an answer. Blue, if you don't. Parsing the Lost Broadcasting, how did you get your job for being an RLCS? I think I talked about that as well. Um, I, I, I started... Well, on RLCS in particular, they asked me to interview, or do the interviews at the Madrid uh, RLCS Season 8 Grand Finals after I'd casted four lands that year. And I think I did pretty well at those lands. Myself and Shogun casted all together at the three Dream Hacks that year. And I also casted Beyond the Summit, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I think I did pretty well. That's probably when RLCS were thinking, yeah, we need to hire this guy. So as soon as RLCS went online with COVID, and location wasn't an issue anymore. They they just hired me. Um, but that was I didn't cast our LCS until season nine when it went online with COVID. Uh, any chance you could get a couple one show matches? Hopefully. Talked about favorite Rocket League player to watch uh, already. Uh, what is your approach to taking risks, reaching out to others throughout your career? I never really bothered people. Like if I reach out to somebody and they don't reply, I would just never message them again. <laughs> I would just uh, reach out to other people instead. Um, unless I got the impression that they just missed it. Like I messaged somebody, then they'd log off like five minutes later. I'll be like, ah, they probably missed that. Um, but yeah, I would usually just not bother people. Um, did you expect reaching 2,000? Is 3,000 possible? Not sure what that question refers to. Uh, call, it, call MHC. Thanks for the five month prime. Welcome back to the channel, man. Ever miss Prime Devo? You do? Yeah, of course. Uh, Devo is insane. Best player in the world. Oh, 2,000 videos. For some reason, when I saw it, did you expect reaching 2,000? I thought Rocket League rating and ranked. I'm like... Do I expect reaching 3,000 videos? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, yeah, Jenks1. Thanks 100 bits as well. Energy would be better with so many other players instead of Squishy, EG, First Killer, Beast Mode, LJ, Aqua. Thoughts on this take? Uh, there's a lot more that goes into a team than just like grabbing a, a player and like th you know throwing them in and saying, "Well, that'll work." Um, but you know, first killer is well, actually, first killer and beast mode. To be honest, they're just probably both in the top five for NA, so it's hard not to succeed when you've got that much talent. I mean, first killer is better than Squishy. He's better than Garrett. Um, there's no no real debate there. Um, like, I'd say top 5 NA is probably, right now, Atomic, First Killer, Justin, Beast Mode, Daniel. And then, you you know, the, the supporting cast for Atomic is better than any of the other supporting casts. Like, the JNAPS Chicago is a better supporting cast than Rettles Arsenal, Com Torment. Uh, Garrett, uh, Garrett Squishy. So yeah, you you've got uh, a unreal player in first killer. Obviously, he, I think he'd be an upgrade. But there's more that goes into a team than just like plugging in a 
good mechanical player. You got to have vibes as well. So I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what the situation is with energy. I don't know if that would be an upgrade, but their season is uh, their their season is not over. I don't know why people are talking about energy roster changes already. They're still uh, in the running for Landon, and they're going to Worlds. So nothing really to to talk about there. Uh, advice on how to get into esports scene not as a player easy analyst commentator probably just like uh, like I said earlier just do commentary on your Twitch stream or upload videos to YouTube of your commentary uh, listen back to it try and improve and have fun with it if you have fun and even if it goes nowhere at least uh, you had a good hobby to pass the time with do you prefer casting one show matches or RLCS matches yeah, I mean it depends day to day I like both but like if I cast a banger RLCS match uh, it'll probably be more fun than a show match that ends up not being a good uh, matchup but if I cast like an unbelievably hype show match that'll probably be more fun than a 4-0 on RLCS so it varies I, I like both uh, most memorable match I've ever cast I talked about talked about that already 50% <laughs> Khaled 1v1 I'm being accused here I'm in a relationship yes do you realize how, how much you've done for the RL, RL scene absolute godsend I don't know if I do uh, but uh, I don't know don't really think about it too much I just uh, do what I do can I smell ants? I don't think so. Uh, what did I do before? RLCS YouTube. I was a student and then I was working as in construction as an HDV driver and I was job hunting as an engineer. BDS greater than G2? Uh, based on the fact that G2 were pretty much the same level as Moist uh, at the major and uh, now BDS are better than Moist yeah there's probably something to this. If they played right now like uh you know today they were just flown out to a neutral location i'd pick bds uh to win because they look like they're every bit is they get all the bet they look like they have all the benefits of the old bds with absolutely none of the drawbacks um do you have any small moments of max that blew your mind that viewers might have missed so you can remember off the top of your head and share um i feel like I can still blow viewers' minds when I correctly predict how a kickoff is going to go <laughs> a lot of the time in 1v1. I feel like a lot of viewers probably watch that and think, how? You're like, what? How did he know that? Because I've watched so many more kickoffs and I really think about them a lot more than your average viewer who just watches a kickoff and isn't really paying attention because it's a kickoff. Uh, but yeah, I think kickoffs probably. That's probably the, the, the one area of the game where I think my knowledge is the highest compared to your average Rocket League viewer. Um, or just I don't know his, it's knowing something some historical stat that the new viewers just literally weren't out there to know as well nothing specific though Growly says why why not how much is the vocality related true although apparently Jack as well yeah great great channel that Jack's got with the Akalad videos I actually told Jack just do that like I remember me and Smellsworth had Jack on a, our podcast back in the day and we told him, just make a YouTube channel, play ranked, record your videos, and uh, upload it with Khaled in the title. Boom, you've got 100, 100k subs and it worked. <laughs> so good, to, good job to Jack. He executed really well on that plan. And he, he's doing really great for himself. Buzz likes you. Thanks to the 46 month year one. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate that. Um, do you to love your fans equally? I don't think it's possible to love your fan, uh, all of your fans equally. There's too many people. And uh, some of them I barely know. Some of them I know very well. So I don't think it's possible to love them equally. Um, I will be pro one day, I swear. <laughs> My name is WooshRL. I'm 14. Watch when I be pro. Don't forget this tweet. Well, that's not really a question, um, but good luck to you. All right, hold on a second. Let me uh, see what other tweets I got here. Um, I think I got a bunch more after. Oh, for goodness sake. I've got so many notifications. Let me see if there's any more. Why is everybody tweeting this? Why is everybody tweeting this picture of me? I don't know why. Uh, who had harder grand final opponents this split? G2 or BDS? Um, well, BDS had Team Liquid and uh, Moist. G2 had Space Station and V1. Mm. probably BDS but they made it look easier what do you think Solary lost against Luminosity in Games Without Borders that's unfortunate uh, 
<laughs> you're getting retweeted this. Uh, would I rather admit NA is better than EU or never cast another game? Obviously, I'd rather admit NA is better than EU uh, than cast another game than never cast another game. But luckily, neither of these things need to happen. Thank goodness. Uh, all right, people are talking about my take on pineapple and pizza. I believe. Chronic says, "Do you think that the RLCS?" Will add buying spot system if yes, what do you think about that? So I think this is referring to do I think uh RLCS will add like a team can buy a spot in the league? No, I don't. I don't think they should. I hope they don't. I think it's a terrible idea. I think it's very boring. All it does is reduce the overall quality of games because some good players get, you know, stuck out of the scene because they orgs are gatekeeping whatever uh reason and I don't know. I prefer players controlling rather than orgs. I think right now Rock League's in a great spot with players doing uh, all the thinking and orgs, still getting a ton of support. Um, I'll see if I can spot any other questions here. Most of it's just people replying to my pineapple and pizza takes, so now might be a good time chat. If you've got a question, at Johnny Boy, me in chat, and I'll take a view from Twitch chat before I head off for today. Um, yeah, it looks like <laughs> Will I host the Spring Split Awards show? Yeah, sure. RL Pro Awards. Why not? I think we enjoyed the first one. Let's go. To, let's do it again. Which player do I think could be a great content creator who currently isn't? Ooh. That's a good question. Uh, which player could be a great content creator who currently isn't? Um... Joyo, why did it take RLCS so long to employ me? Uh, location, because they had a live studio. Uh, I'm in the UK. And also because they, they, I think back in the day, they had a very particular style of casting that they wanted, and I didn't do that. And it's only uh, in the more recent seasons that uh, the style that I do has become more popular. Smithlar, thanks for 56 month tier one. Welcome back to the channel, man. Do you get health insurance at Caster? Uh, I know. Well, I I don't think any of the Americans do, but luckily in the UK we don't need to because we just have uh, national health service. So yeah, it feels bad for feels bad for the Americans. Do I cast from the setup I'm on right now? Yeah, I do. But I stand and I move the camera to point higher. Do you think Rock League will ever get to a point where kids pay to be in sanctioned leagues? Uh, probably not. I don't. I certainly hope not. How do I take care of my nose? Just, you know, face wash, moisturize. Uh, did I play sports in real life? I used to play a lot of football as a kid. A little bit of badminton. Uh, football was my main sport. What retired player would I love to see back in our LCS? Uh, I mean, Cuxer isn't retired, but hopefully he keeps qualifying. Marky Duda probably. He was the biggest personality. He's no longer in it. Upcoming ones players to look out for? Ooh. Um... <laughs> Raise bull, I suppose. How do I like the coffee? Uh, black, no sugar. BDS better than G2 because BDS are better than Moist, even though Moist aren't in LA form right now. I don't think that is valid. I think Moist were like closer to their LA form in the first event uh, of this split, and BDS still annihilated them. I mean, Moist took BDS to seven in the first series, but in the second series, they just had no chance. Uh, but I mean, I don't think G2 are in their LA form either. They've kind of looked like they fell off a little bit. I don't think Moist or G2 are like at their LA form. I think they both fell off slightly. But I mean, you just got to look at how BDS are playing, man. They're, they're just, they look ridiculous right now. I think people are saying that G2 look better than BDS. That's that's just pre-copium. Uh, there's no way you can tell me that G2 look better than BDS. How many gifted sub for a 24-hour stream? Uh, however, however, whatever number is too high that's how many whatever number is too high that's how many for a 24 hour stream uh fairy market turbo they rebound what happened uh, can they rebound or what happened um i think mark definitely fairy peak maybe turbo's gonna have a hard time because he's an na um but i think any three of them could they've got to get on it immediately they better be grinding now like crazy 
uh, fastest improvement in the in the pro scene. Um, probably Monkeyman or Mark by eight between season nine and ten. Their level up was insane. When you use word player phrases, speech and casting, is that completely improv or do you have set phrases already in mind? I never write down pretty much anything. I've I've sometimes like had a funny joke in mind that I'll write down something like that's quite funny, I'll write that down for tomorrow, but that ninety nine point nine percent of what I say on cast is just uh, improv. So I think coaches do enough, are they important to the game? I don't really know. I don't really know the around behind the scenes, so I don't know. Uh favorite team combo to watch that has that isn't top tier I don't know that's a tough one uh, do you have I am particular up and coming player it's really impressed with Stizzy in the last event for EU and uh, Juicy today in uh, Gamers Light Borders what teams I think will qualify from NA same as uh, LA and EU uh BDS, Moist, KC, Team Liquid, Sillery. Um, it's CJ. I don't think... Um, uh, so you, uh, you, create, you use a lot of distortion in your voice and your casting. You work with a specialist. No, I've not. I've never worked with a specialist or a vocal coach. Uh, how did I develop it? Just trial and error. Um, just listening back to my cast and seeing what sounds good. Did I like my job as an engineer? I didn't actually work as an engineer. I was job hunting. But I just ended up doing Twitch full time. He'll become more of a threat, Zen or Drally? Uh, probably Zen initially because he's more of a threes player. Drally uh, still needs to level up in that game mode. Work day look like when you aren't casting? I start very late because, I mean, I'm streaming right now. It's coming on 11 p.m. And I want to feel awake when I'm live streaming. And I stream quite late. And I also work quite late. So I try to stay awake like till 2, 3 in the morning every day because if I don't then I'll be tired when I'm supposed to be awake working snog marry avoid full boost on kickoffs uh, choose spawn after being demoed 120 boost total ooh well definitely avoid full boost on kickoffs that sounds lame uh, smo smog snog <laughs> smog uh, that's the Scottish uh, spring's been making me think of that uh Probably Snog, 120 boost total, and then uh, choose spawn after demo would be a Mary. I know for sure that would work. 20, 120 boost, who knows what that would do. That might be good. It sounds good, but it might not, it might not be good. How does the style of your co-caster affect your own style approach? You plus Shogun has been my favorite casting duo for a while. After Friday, maybe me <laughs> plus Wavepunk. All right, don't tell Shogun that. Um, but yeah, the co-caster makes a big difference. You know, it's really important to match each other's energy and to try and make each other sound good like whenever i hear a caster not immediately replying at least with a noise or like the intention to reply to something the other caster says i'm just thinking why do you do that you just make him sound bad you're just making your co-caster sound bad now uh did you see do you see yourself gc in comp to what do i see myself grand champion i mean i am if that's what you mean uh have the funny jokes that you written down ever bomb? I mean, it depends what you consider bomb. If you consider bomb, like, it's a dad joke and everybody's really upset that uh, how bad it was, and I wouldn't consider that bombing. Like, that's kind of what you're going for, right? Uh, no idea about UE5. Did you improve, improve the X-Giants pun streak? Yeah, I did. That, that one I did. Uh, no, I didn't improve that. I, I wrote that uh, down. The Atachi spun on the pun on the spot. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't make. I I didn't make that one up on the spot. Actually, no. I think I kind of like during the cast. I was like, "Oh, I want to do this. What could I say?" And I thought of it there, but I definitely like, you know, came up with it live. I didn't have it written, if that's what you mean. I don't know if Sizzy plays ones. Uh, speaking of coaches, do you think they should be able to spectate matches live? Would be nice, but there's no way to stop them from saying to their players, "He's out of boost" or X Y Z or whatever else. Um, you know, some coaches have said that they're always sitting inside the Discord and that the admins can hear them, but they could just load up another program and be talking to their players on a different program. So there's no way to absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, prevent uh, cheating. So that's why they, they don't do it. But it would be, it'd be great if coaches could be in there. RLCS event for Rumbler Hoops. I don't know if Rumbler Hoops are appropriate for an RLCS event. Uh, that's more content than competitive for me. 
Um, Karma underrated? Uh, probably not. I don't think so. Did I have Lego as a kid? I mostly had Connects, but I had a little bit of Lego as well. Rock League World Cup in the future relies every continent. That would be awesome. Uh, favorite LAN? My favorite LANs were probably RLCS Season 2, uh, Beyond the Summit, uh, probably those two are the best in terms of nostalgia. But honestly, the LA LAN that just happened was absolutely top tier. I'd put it up there with the best. My feet were so sore at the end of that one because all I did all day was stand, stand in talking to people. Best caster is not an RLCS. I uh, definitely don't want to answer that one because that's going to be too controversial. Why do you think NA has less top talent than EU? Uh, EU's got a lot of little communities that kind of help talent grow, like the French community, Spanish community, English community, Dutch, like so on and so on. Lots of different countries that help their talent from that country uh, grow. Whereas in America, everybody just like speaks the same language so all the best players end up on the best teams and they don't really play with the players who are worse than them as much at least so there's less experience also i think europe is just like more sweaty and ranked and more more try hard more more brutal uh more events like fusion or smug i, I mean i definitely hope say so. hey, fusion is kind of like uh gamers like borders right so that's cool smug uh, i would definitely love to bring that back we're always we're always working on stuff Uh, favorite type of goals. Love, love me a mind game. Love me an own goal. Um, what else? Love, love watching. Redirects are always really satisfying. Pinches are always really satisfying. I don't know, just stuff that looks cool. Banging like really fast-paced passing plays are really cool. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Yeah, Europe is a higher population. Yeah, it's true. Although most of Europe, uh, more most of the European players come from like the west of Europe, not the east, where there's actually a lot. There's a lot of like people in Eastern Europe who that has never really been a successful area for Rocket League. Which two teams spring line would be best for Rocket League as a whole, regardless of how improbable? Uh, oh, finals. Yeah, Furia Falcons would be unbelievable to see in the final. Do I have a music artist I like seeing the Rock League playlists? Uh, Isaac App, obviously. But um, uh, honestly, like I just I would love to see other genres in the Rock League playlist. I think Rock League goes well with like classical. It goes well with like hip hop. It goes well with lots of different types of music, not just EDM. Energy maker roster change? No, their season's still on, man. No. <laughs> what if they win worlds? Then they change then. Can I see myself casting another game? Uh, not anytime soon. I mean, maybe in the distant future, but maybe a little bit of fun here and there casting like party games, but nah. Tacos burgers, why not both? Push day, pull day, or legs? I, I only do full body workouts, so I never do push, push, pull legs. Um, I just do full body workouts every time. Right now I'm doing two, I'm switching between two workouts, I'm doing three a week. And I'm doing A, B, A, B, A, B workouts. One of them is uh, squats, bench, rows, loaded carries, uh, lying extensions, cheat curls. And the other one is deadlifts, chin-ups, overhead press, reverse lunges, uh, push-ups, and face pulls. That's my two workouts. Both of them take about 45 minutes to, to get through. To have a dream car? Not really. Don't really care about a car. Because I just live in the middle of a city where I walk everywhere. Will I make my own bracket for this upcoming NA split? Uh, I'll probably just do that live when... Or I'll just do predictions. I'm, I'm going to be view partying this weekend. I'm not working RLCS on the show this weekend. So I'll be doing view parties. To go to the gym or work out at home? A bit of both. I started working out at home during COVID. I bought some adjustable dumbbells that go up to 40 kg each. It's like 90 pounds or something, I think. What is 40 kilograms in pounds for all you Americans? Yeah, 88 pounds. So they're like, I couldn't believe that I found most of the adjustable dumbbells only go up to like 20 or 25 kg, but I found ones that go up to 88, which is really good because 
Most of the adjustable dumbbells are too small. Um, they're too light, but these ones are good because you can go heavy, heavier at least. You still have to like go for like higher rep exercises on some exercises though. Like 90 pounds for most leg exercises is not enough, so you have to make it difficult by doing like split squats instead of squats and stuff. Most satisfying player name to shout while casting? It's got to be Ahmad, right? <laughs> How could you meet me in London? Uh, oh, I'll be about. I'll be about in London. Um, don't worry. At LAN events, I always try to make myself as available as possible. Whether that's like hanging about in a uh, outside the venue or somewhere that people can come meet me, I'll definitely be. Uh, I'll definitely be hanging about somewhere accessible. I was the uh, honestly both of the land days like the crowd days in LA I'm pretty sure I was meeting people for like more than two hours on both days <laughs> more than two hours on both days my feet were killing me but it was worth it uh consider doing an Arabic phrase if Falcon score a banger probably not because my Arabic is horrendous bench press or dumbbell press preference uh I prefer dumbbell Because uh, my right arm uh, was always a lot, lot stronger because I used to work manual labor. Um, so if I don't do dumbbell, then I'll probably have imbalances. Also, funnily enough, because my right arm was a lot stronger from manual labor uh, after university, my when I started working out, uh, seriously my left <laughs> pec developed much faster than my right one because my right arm was lifting all the weight <laughs> on the right side uh, the chest wasn't doing anything <laughs> I needed to like keep going for a while before the uh, right pec caught up ever gone rock climbing uh, uh, ages ago but nah not really anywhere in America you'd want to visit you haven't visited yet uh I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I'll be completely honest. America is not near the top of the list for the places I want to go. Because I've been to Vegas, LA a bunch, San Francisco, New York, uh, Chicago for one night. I mean, I know there's lots of cool places in America, but I wouldn't really be going to the place. I'd, I would probably like only want to go to meet people. Because like, I've got a lot of American friends. I'd probably just want to go and hang out with them, but I don't really care about the place too much. Um, but there are lots of places that I would like to go because they're very, very different. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Iceland, that's like a different world compared to like uh, UK or America. And a bunch of places in Europe as well. I mean, it's just so close. So I'd rather go somewhere like I only have to catch a flight for two or three hours than get on a flight for seven or eight hours and I'm just in, I'm in America again. <laughs> you know, I've been to America. If I was going to go somewhere in North America, it'd probably be uh, Toronto because I've only ever been to Montreal I've never been to Toronto uh, I've technically been yeah I've been to Asia I've been to Lebanon before Beirut Lebanon but that's like barely Asia like the closest part of Asia that I can get to never been to Asia Asia Latin in Brazil yeah why not sounds fun um, but yeah guys I'm gonna go eat I'm absolutely starving so 